Now you can hear me? Let's try it again. Hey there, hi there, oh there is our <laughs> nuts are on a table. And boy are we nervous is how I let off. This is Cheryl. <laughs> right, my lovely wife Cheryl. And uh, as I said just before that happened, we've tweaked too many variables for this stream for anything to go properly well. Let me enumerate them and then you can like see if you can spot it. It'll be like I wish I'd made a bingo card for like the nat mess up on stream. <sighs> it's also conditions. one of those days. It feels like... It does feel like one of those days. Yeah. I don't know. How are you guys doing? Who's here? Omelette's here. Oberon's here. Mokai Sue's here. Fracklin Dream, good to see ya. Hey, Varys, how's it going? Uh, we sat down a little bit, uh, Omelette and I, and uh, Inaudible, who's actually a sound engineer, and we tweaked a bunch of things with the audio. Now, hopefully, the, you're hearing us a bit louder than normal, because what we eventually determined from that second sound test was that the little lav mics that I've been using, and if you saw that five things you didn't know about about nights around a table, you know that I glue them to my chest using toupee tape. Well, th those were, they're crummy. I mean, who knew that spending 20 bucks on a microphone gets you crummy sound? <laughs> uh, and I bought two of them because yeah, why not buy crummy at twice the price? So what we've done is now we've scrapped those for the time being. If this doesn't work, we'll go back to them. But we have the Zoom recorder suspended in the ceiling right above us. And now just about five minutes before, I had no way to suspend it in the ceiling. I had no boom for it. And so Inaudible suggested that I put it on foam. I also had no foam. So instead, I, at the last second, I found it's these, <laughs> yeah, these dish sponges. And so I thought, oh, maybe and the reason why we had to have it in foam, because I, I had the thing on this little tripod. Look, this is all behind the scenes stuff. If you're not, we will talk about board games, I promise. Look, you can see a board game up at the corner. It's going to happen. Don't worry, board games are coming. Hold on, Fratical Dream says, this is your way, Ryan. You love tweaking things. Yes. I love tweaking things until things get better. I just, I do it. You know what's interesting, too? I saw a uh, an unboxing that I did exactly a year ago. You know how Facebook reminds you of stuff that you did, in, like, last year? So I looked at that post, and it looked like I was in a mud pit. Like, the color was so bad. The lighting was so bad. I was just like, wow, that's just, like, a year's difference. So things are getting better slowly but surely, but we have to smash things and set them on fire before the forest has to burn down before new growth can be generated. Sure. Had this little tripod. And my kitchen sponges. <laughs> and your kitchen sponges. And I had it on the table. And the reason why we needed this is because we noticed in the sound test, when you knock the table or roll dice or whatever, or set things down, we have those cool plastic inserts for a Feast for Odin, the, the stream that we did on Saturday night. And I just found just it gently sitting around the table, the microphone was like, bah, crack. And it sounded like a giant had uh, touched down. So I put it on sponges. But then at the last second, I heard the doorbell ring. And that's another thing that I don't want to have happen during the stream. The doorbell rang and it was Amazon delivering a brand new boom. So what did I do? But before this stream began, hastily, I jerry-rigged the boom up into the ceiling and screwed the microphone or the, yeah, the zoom with its microphones up into there. So I don't know about you, Cher Cher, but I'm looking forward to the point in the stream where that all comes crashing down on our heads. I really hope it doesn't. Like Truman Show style. It was like, heavy. We're in a simulation. Spoilers. Uh, great. Little Trent is a little tripod. It's cute, isn't it? The thumbnail was awesome. Thank you. Cheryl's upset that I didn't put a beard on her for that thumbnail because she thought, oh, the guy on the box, where is he? The guy in the box I, has I a beard. I think it would have been funnier, is all. I don't know. I thought it was pretty funny as yeah. is. Okay. I got to sit here going, look, and I'm like, is my, is, my, is my face at the right angle, Cheryl? She's like, no, to the left. You know, the whole time. I don't know. Good times, good times. So, hey, I can get glad you join. Hey, Mom for Games. Do you play games, Mom for Games? I hope so. What is going on here? Let me, let me get to it. This is going to be completely different than anything that we've done on the stream. And I am super jazz pants excited about it. I realize that I don't have my, uh, my audio in because there's an important audio cue. So what's happening is right now, I hope right now, I didn't even check, Rado and Ruel are doing the R&R &R show on their stream. When they're done, they're going to toss some people our way via the raid function. And then we're going to get cracking on this concept that I have for a new style of board game video. I don't think you've seen it anywhere else. And if you have, don't let me know because I'll cry because I think I'm so <laughs> unique and original with this thing. Um, and I'm going to explain this again when the new audience comes in. So maybe I shouldn't even talk about it. But like, like a little, I don't want to repeat myself and bore you, but a little glimpse is that we're going to be playing a game, but not the entire game. I don't know how much more to say. 
But yeah. there are a few things that I wanted to talk to you about first. So, what month is it, Cher Cher? Uh, U.A. Rosenberg month? It's U.A. Rosenberg oh, U- month. I always Uwe, say that yeah. wrong. I Why do I say Uwe. that wrong every time? If you speak German yeah. and it's not Uwe, and I've been saying Uwe this entire like, month. I don't say it wrong, and then I said it wrong. Yeah. If I've been saying it wrong, please let me know. Yeah. One thing I do to find out how people say their names, by the way, is I go and I try to find interviews with them on YouTube. But the problem is it's always the English speaker introducing them and then saying their name wrong. And they go, well, I don't know if I, if I butchered your name or not. And then the, you know, the, the very polite German board gamer goes, no, no, it's, it's okay. It's okay. And then they continue. I'm like, no, it's not okay. How do you say your name? Mom for Games. Look. Mm. Mom for Games says... I'm skipping the uh, the end of R. Was R and R boring? I hope not. What were they talking about, Mafra Games? Hopefully, they were exciting. You would have come over anyway. They'll be here momentarily. I don't let me. I don't know how close they are to the end of it, but I am ripping off Rado's idea entirely. Uh, great artists steal. So what Rado does is he yaps like I'm doing now with the audience, and then he. Then he transitions into like, okay, we're, we're taping a show now. So you're like the live studio audience for the show. So the interaction kind of cuts out and he, he, he does the show taping with Ruel. And then he periodically dips back and does more uh, audience stuff. So that's what we're going to do this time. Hello, Pitsko. Good to see you. Glad you could join us. Um, again, once uh, once we reach critical mass, mass, I will tell you what's going on. But first, a couple of things about Uwe... Rosenberg month, yes, which is you. all month long in the month of November on Nights Around a Table. We've already done such fun things. Hopefully you caught the stream, A Feast for Odin, last Saturday night. It ran an unfortunate five hours, and that's one thing we're trying to correct with this stream. We don't want anybody necessarily to be here. If you're going to be here for five hours, that's totally cool. But for people who don't have that kind of time on their hands, we've got something else for you. Anyway, my favorite part of that stream, uh, I think I called the VOD the biggest poop I've ever eaten. Because uh, I won't spoil it if you didn't see it, but snack time during that stream was something special and I don't know if I'll ever top myself. I'll just leave that there. Uh, last week, Cheshire was here and we played... <laughs> what did we play? Uh, Caverna. Caverna together. <laughs> That's right. Base, yeah. base game Caverna without the expansion. And who won? This guy. However, I uh, miscalculated the score. So the score, I think I put down something like 77 to 71. And what I did was, and they figured this out better in, in, a, in a later game. Um, you know how you go down the score and sometimes it's marked like, oh, these are negative points, so subtract these. Like I think on the Agricola score sheet, it does that too. Um, so it does that twice on the Caverna score sheet. And I just went and just added everything straight down the column. And I was like, man, there's the scores. Da, da, da. And I forgot to subtract the actual subtractables. The final score for Caverna was 64 to 62. So I still won. Hooray. Yes, you still That's win. fine. Give me one. I rarely win. That's um, not true. You like, no, you've looked at the stats. He was, yeah. <laughs> we were talking about, are we writing a folk song about Uwe? Was Uwe born in November or something? <laughs> Another YouTuber I watch is doing Uwe games for, who is it? I'll have his head. No, I'd love to know who, when the other YouTuber is doing Uwe Rosenberg month, because maybe we can team up like Voltron. He was born in March 1970. Oh, that's it. Scrap it. <laughs> what have I done? No, we're just doing Uwe Rosenberg month in November because we did Uwe Rosenberg month in November last year. So that's why I had a bunch of stuff that could carry over. A bunch of how to plays. If you want to see how to play Caverna, how to play Agricola, we've got all of that. Maybe just to <laughs> pique people's interest, we should show a shot of the game that we're talking about today, Glass Road. This was, Omelette was very kind. Omelette went to the mall, to the Oshawa Center, where there are a bunch of, I don't know what it's like in your hometown, but until a week ago, we didn't have a devoted board game store in Oshawa that sold like just nothing but cool board. We had stuff like Calendar Club where you get like like My Little Pony Clue and stuff like like mass well, market branded. And there's that cafe downtown but Oh yeah, you're right. There's Brew Wizards Cafe they downtown. Stuff. They do sell okay. stuff. But the problem is and especially with the mall, they got to pay mall rental prices, right? So you go in there uh, and there's not there's an area deal to be found in fact everything's like 10 20 bucks more expensive than any game you can buy anywhere you know or including the shipping when they tack on the shipping so uh, but omelet went and did some scouting and he said hey guess what there's the uh, copy of glass road uh, at the mind games I don't know if you know mind games I think it's a is it Canadian only no it's Canadian and American but there's a bunch of stores in Canada 
and it sells stuff like Puyo Pop and, and those little mini doll houses, and it sells like Zelda swords, like actual metal swords, up when I saw those there, uh, and Legos, like nerdy Lego sets, and puzzles. So, uh, but their board games are outrageously expensive. So this one was in the for sale section. It's a uh, glass road in Canada anyway. In Canuck Bucks, it usually sells for about 60 Canuck Bucks, and at Mind Games, it sells for 80. And they had it reduced down to 40, which seemed like a deal and a half. So I picked it up. It's Uwe Rosenberg month. It's the only game I've had to buy all month long because Asmodee Canada sent a copy of Halatau and a copy of Patchwork Christmas. And those are both coming up. So much... Uh, I, what do you guys say? <laughs> we don't come to watch Ryan's astounding math skills. And that's a good thing. Uh, Dan, that's a, that is a great price. And do you know why it's a great price? I think, And I just discovered this today. It feels like something I knew and then I was reminded of. Uh, Mayfair Games, so you might recognize this little logo on the side of some of your game boxes, a little M, uh, as a publisher, did a bunch of games, uh, no longer exists. And I had no idea, did you know that, that they're, they're belly up? So they were bought out by Asmodee and they decided just to like close up shop, shut the doors, sell all their IP. Uh, so different publishers have their IP now, the, the rights to publish their stuff. So this one is transferred from Mayfair and I guess Feuerland and Capstone bought it. And if I'm saying Feuerland wrong, I've never taken German. But Scherscher has taken German. Oh. How do you say fire in German, Scherscher? I don't. <laughs> You don't know? What's the one phrase you do know how to say in German? Ich weiß nicht. Why do you know how to say that phrase? Because that's what our German teacher taught us. <laughs> and why did he teach you that phrase? He said it mean, meant I don't know when I later learned it meant I know nothing. So, <laughs> But he was a real... Yeah, he was a... He was one of those teachers who shouldn't be teaching. He should have retired like 10 years prior. So I took... It was miserable. We learn... Uh, we learn uh, we're prescribed French classes in Canada. We take French classes here in Ontario anyway from, from grade four on to grade nine, and it's all compulsory. Then after grade nine, you can opt to take French. I had a fantastic French teacher in high school. So I went on and I took French in grade 10, and I went, took French in grade 11, and then when I got to 12th grade, I got that guy, and I dropped it after two days. I was like, that this guy doesn't know. He had a thing. People told you know how people you get the skinny on teachers from other kids who have had those teachers, and you're like, what am I getting into? So they said, like, oh, this guy's nuts. They said he cannot handle anybody being near the window. And I said, what, like sitting up on the windowsill when the window's open? I can see how that would no. They're like, no 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 no. Window closed. I'm like but still sitting up in the windowsill? They're like, no, 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 no. Near the wall with the window in it, window closed, locked, blinds drawn. He can't handle it. I was like, that's weird. I thought, they must be making it up. I got to put that to the test. So very first day of French class with this guy, I went and, you know, window was closed. It was locked. The blinds were drawn. And I just kind of like casually just kind of like leaned up uh, near the window, like not even on the glass, but on the wall next to the glass. He comes in, sets his book down, and he goes, get away from that window! <laughs> so, you really wonder what must have happened to the guy for that yeah. to be a thing. I, I feel kind of bad. Yeah. Uh, I should go snap up a copy if I can find it, says Oberon. It was only, there was only one copy at that one mind game, so uh, mm -hmm. maybe lucky, maybe not, but take, take a look for sure. I can't hear, but hopefully Ryan's giving me credit for seeing the on-sale copy. I am. Yes. On it. I did give you credit, yes. And he can't hear that either, so somebody can type it to him in chat. Uh, oh, no. Yes, oh, somebody did. Great, Oberon did. Uh, <laughs> sorry, for what phrase again? I'm, I'm German-speaking. Oh, uh, Pisky is, is German-speaking. So, uh, Fe Feuerland Games? F E U E R Lend Games uh, was one that we don't know how to say, and I want to make sure that I'm pronouncing Uwe correctly. U W E, the, the, the first name of the designer. Uh, Ryan the Rebel, I guess. <laughs> uh, man, there's this guy on TikTok who's like, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a something disturber after my own heart, and he just did something fantastic. I'll see if I can find it and throw this in the description. I just thought, you saw, you know exactly what I, I'm talking about. So he goes into the gas station, and there's this uh, this cutout, this life size cutout of uh, Post Malone, and he says to the guy, <laughs> he's the kind of guy who's like, I could probably do something funny with this life size cutout of Post Malone. So he says to the guy, Hey, what are you doing with that cutout of Post Malone? when you're done with it. And the guy's like, I don't know. I have no idea. He goes, these things just arrive here. I don't know who puts them there. And I don't know. They, get, they just disappear one day and I don't know who takes them. <laughs> so this guy gets an idea. And so he goes to his friend who has like a printing company and, he, and his other friend who's a photographer and he does this photo shoot of himself. 
And then he, uh, oh, Sheely, the guy's name is Sheely, right? Because yes. I remember it's on the side. Right. So he does this photo shoot of him like jumping, and then he, he has them photoshop this big thing of him jumping in front of a highway, and he, he says, like, it's the Sheely meal. And then he puts and like he's a, got a pizza. A, yeah, he's holding a, a pizza backpack <laughs> and a little quote that says, it's delicious. So he does this huge thing. It's like a 12 foot tall standee, this massive, massive thing. And he just goes to this gas station near his house, and he puts on like his mask, and nobody could tell the guy in the picture is him, and he just walks in and he says, the cashier mind if I put this here they're like yeah sure go ahead so he puts this enormous 12 foot tall poster of, of himself in the gas station oh fantastic that that feels like a Ryan that play that is right a Ryan there. thing to yeah. do very much jealous I didn't oh Uva not Uve Uva seriously oh Uva I'm gonna so have to you've been saying it wrong too I'm gonna have to change everything I've done Uva. everything I know is wrong okay. uh, thank yep, you all correct. oh wait 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 Pitsky says, yep, I'll correct, but I don't know if Pitsky's saying I'll correct to Uva or Uve. <laughs> I don't know. Spell it all phonetically for it, Pitsky. Uh, Ryan says he found it all by himself. No, no, no. DJ Barkley, don't tell him that. That'll start fights. That's not true. That'll start fights. <laughs> horrible, horrible fights. Um, now, one of the tricky things about this stream, it's like the whole month has been alive. I know, I know, I know. Uh, I'm going into Toronto tomorrow for an appointment, and there's a board game store, and I really shouldn't be spending any money on board games. Maybe you're the same type of person, but uh, I thought, what am I going to fill out the rest of the month with? We got Glass Road right now. This Saturday night, Cheryl's going to join me again. We're going to be playing La Havre, and it's a copy that I found under the Christmas tree last year and didn't open all year long. So I just opened it for the first time a couple of weeks ago to learn how to play it. So La Havre, looking forward to that. Another Ube game. And you know what? That game has been on the Board Game Geek uh, Top 100 list for, like, seven or eight years now so it hasn't been dislodged so maybe it's very good uh, uh uwe without the y uwe i uwe. thought the w had a v sound on it uwe that's how you said it that's how i said it oh my gosh ha! oh no really <laughs> i'm gonna get a german second opinion on this yeah, you don't like that I, I was know. right. I, I don't can like, tell. I don't like you the hate that. You... I, I don't like it. I don't like it. It's like the... Okay. I don't know how people resist shrink. I must open new games ASAP. Uh, I used to be like that, but then I got into a mode where... And this is terrible. Don't be like me. But I had the channel, and I wanted to grow it. And I thought, like, why would I open a board game? That's content. So I thought, oh, I'll do an unboxing. So I, I got in the habit of saving my in-shrink stuff for unboxings to the point where I had icky feelings whenever I opened something because I felt like oh, I'm wasting potential content. And then I found out people don't really like <laughs> unboxings anyway. So yeah. Yeah, it's okay that I open them now. Mom for games. That's <laughs> an incredible deal. It, well, for 40 bucks, yeah. For, well, that's 42 bucks. No. Oh, what are we talking about? What's the incredible wow, deal? Oh, La Havre for $17. 17 bucks. Where? Is that Yankee bucks or Canuck bucks? Where'd you get that? It's got to be Yankee bucks. Have to. DJ Murphy has to open the box. Oberon says, <laughs> I'm basing Uva on my visit to Germany. The younger son of the family I stayed with was named Uva. Oh. Yeah, but I wonder if it's like in English where we can see the name Stacy or we can say Stachia. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, there's different ways. Going with that, I didn't <laughs> different that. ways to pronounce them, or Stephen, or Stepahen. <laughs> like we kind of sometimes say Stepahen. Great dollars, mom for games. That's uh, that's very uh, that's v v very not. What's the word? I don't know. I don't want to say the word egocentric, but it's very. Uh, there are other currencies, and many of them are called dollars. By the way, I'm just going to say that. There's lots of places have dollars. Which dollars? U.S. 17, dollars. U.S. dollars. I'm assuming because that sounds like a very U.S. thing to yeah. say, right? Oh, the box oh. was damaged, but contents were perfect. How okay. damaged was it? Because that's the other thing I did. You was, are pretty particular about your boxes. Mm, mm, I just yeah. uh, I just went to this place I'm going to mention in a second called Meeple Mart in Toronto, and they have a fantastic ding and dent section. And the last time I went there, they had a great copy of something and in their ding and dent section and I said like it's not even damaged why is it in your ding and dent section like I feel bad taking off your hand for bucks off and they said oh because when we get these skids if the skids being kicked in the corner and like one copy is damaged we sell all the copies in the skid for ding and dent price because we got a ding, ding and dent discount on it I'm like wow fantastic deal so I went and I got this copy of this game and it was cool but the last time I went I got a copy of through the ages from check games edition and I thought oh it's perfect and I found the one that didn't have any anything Thing, any no nudges or dents or anything. I took it up to the front and like, ah, oh, this is beautiful. I'm getting a great price and there's not a scratch on it. And the guy at the counter 
kind of like flips it over and he goes, oh yeah, it's not too bad. And there's like the, <laughs> this like headbutt dent in the corner of it. I'm like, oh, why did you even point it out to me? I could have been happy. I could have been <laughs> pleased with it. Haha, <laughs> US says Muffer Games. Okay, good. Kenyan, Kenyan dollars, exactly. I suspected Kenyan dollars, but I had to clarify. <laughs> No, you didn't. I brought up Meeple Mart, and we will get to the thing. We will. We're gonna do the thing, the Glass Road thing again. I'm just. We're just. Uh, we're just seeing when that R and R our show ends, so I don't have to double up on what we're ha what's happening. But I wanted to ask you guys a question. Maybe pop up a little bit of a poll. I went to. Uh, I went to Meeple Mart last time I was there and looking for Uve games and they had the one thing that I thought maybe people would be interested in or not, they had some expansions to Bonanza. I don't know if you know Bonanza, but that's like an Uve game that you wouldn't think was Uve Rosenberg because it's completely, it's, 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 uh, it's got a completely different art style. It's kind of a, abrasive looking and a little bit kiddie and it doesn't look like, well, it doesn't look like this and it's not illustrated by Clemens Franz, but it really is a fantastic game for multiple players. What's the matter? Nothing. You, nothing. Do you like uh, Bonanza? No, it's just the... <laughs> do you like Bonanza, Cheryl? Uh, yeah, I do actually. Right, it's a, yeah. it's a cool game. So they had the the expansions for Bonanza are really weird. So they had gangsters and ladies. Those are the two. Oh, and they had babies. So <laughs> Bonanza babies, Bonanza gangsters, and Bonanza ladies. They're not that what? much money. I know they're not that expensive. And I thought, would that be an interesting addition to Uwe Uva Uva Stakiai Rosenberg Month? Uh, I'm gonna put a poll up. Let me know. You're gonna hit vote one for yes, I want to see Bonanza expansions featured towards the end of the month, or no, I do not care about that whatsoever. Save your money, that's pointless. I already have a Bonanza how to play up in the channel. So vote, exclamation mark, vote, space one for yes, exclamation yes, mark, vote, space two, no Bonanza expansions. We don't care, not interesting. Why would you bother? So, that, I don't know. Because I keep looking at those, and I'm like, gangsters, what a weird expansion. And babies? I might even have one kicking around that I Actually. haven't even touched called Highbon, which is another expansion that's like Western themed. Do you, you remember? You do have that. Did yeah. I get rid of it or do I still have it? It's up there somewhere, isn't it? Uh, I, can, I think I can see, see it. I don't know. Yeah, there's a little box, so yeah. Uh oh, it's, I see Paris. Okay, be careful. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> So a bunch of votes for one so far. One person at least doesn't care. I don't even like his games, says DJ Murphy. <laughs> uh, yeah, Fair. you didn't like... Which one didn't you like that you said was, oh, Lahav? DJ Mark V does not. DJ Mark V, by the way, and Omelette are both modding for us. Thank you very much. If anybody gets out of hand, that's it. They're, <laughs> they're the bouncers. Uh, but yeah, DJ Mark V, you said that Lahav uh, is not your ball game at all. Not, not a favorite. I might like Bonanza, though. Yeah, Bonanza is very different than anything that he's ever done. Oh, it's very But divisive. this game, it is, yeah, it's it's a split vote so yeah. far. This game, Glass Road, there are many similarities to past Uwa E Staki E Rosenberg games. I'm gonna that's gonna trip me up now forever. Oh my gosh. Can we get it? Go if you have German friends, invite them into the chat right now <laughs> because I need I, I like Patrick's it's DJ Mach V and uh, All Creatures Big and Small. Which is not the initialism you put. You put all creatures and the big small, but nothing else. Mm, and that's another talk about divisive. Uh, DJ Mark V, uh, DM explains who's a patron of the channel. Let me just pop that up. Who's a patron of the channel uh, doesn't like the two player ones. They did two player, two two player ones based on Caverna, and they did one two player one based on. Oh, that's going to step on this pole. That's fine. I can't spell. I really want to try Lahavs' Oberon, but I think I have enough of uh, his Hunger Games. Yeah, is it another one where you gotta, like, feed your people? This one, Glass Road, there's no feeding people. That's a staple of Rosenberg games, is that there's this time pressure in this race where you have to gather enough food in order to feed your people, and if you don't do it for every food you don't feed somebody, you gotta take negative points. Terrible, uh, depending on what kind of gamer you are. So, Caverna does that, yeah. and Agricola does that, and... Or at Labora, does that do that? No, it doesn't do that. I, know. I can't remember. There's feeding people in here, but there's not that pressure to feed people. Agricola is the worst for it. It's yeah, it's yeah. that it'll tie your stomach in knots. And when you're finished, I feel like when you're finished Agricola, you feel like you've survived it. You don't really feel like you've played the game. You feel like you've run a gauntlet. Uh -oh. What's the matter? 
Mahavra is harsher than Agricola for feeding. Uh oh, oh really? Oh God. All I know about Lahav is that when oh. I opened it, there was a huge warehouse full of cows. So I thought, hmm, scrumptious. We should be fine. There's Feast Rodin. You got to duck, duck, <laughs> duck out of the way. <laughs> oh yes, thank you. Feast for Odin is another one where you got to feed people, but Feast for Odin is a but lot I looser. Consider that like a stressful feeding. It's not because it gives, but you know, it's more stressful in a Feast for Odin. We played the long version, the five hour version last Saturday night. There's a shorter version that cuts it just one round tighter, but the food that you get at harvest time is is different and more sparse. So oh, I found okay. the very first time we played it, we played that short version and it was hard, I thought, hard to feed people. Look, man, total divided, divided vote on the old That's very bonanza. Close. Hmm. That's very close. That's good to know. Okay, thank you for your feedback on that. I will take that under advisement. I just love going into a board game and walking out with something. But it's... I don't know. You gotta do stuff that people enjoy. You will enjoy this. I keep teasing. We'll get there. We'll get there. How's the R in our show? Don't worry. Are they coming over soon? Uh, great. I can't spell. Patreon. Great. Uh, we should also talk about, ah, uh, following Lahav, if you saw that time Eagle Griffin Games sent us a big stack of stuff and we sat down there with Shawnee O and opened every single last one of them, Shawnee O is going to be back a week from this coming Saturday. So Cheryl's here this Saturday and then a week after that it's going to be Shawnee O. We're going to be playing Halatau. Maybe if the mods want to get, they want to fight and get a cover of Halatau up, you can see what that one looks like. I'm very excited about Halatau because it has meat pulls in it. It has little little wooden meeples that look like little sausages with little ham bones sticking out of the wall. It looks so adorable. I love it. Yeah, here it comes. Here it comes. You got a duck. You got a yeah, duck. If it works, I think you spelled, no, you spelled it right. Where is it? Is it coming? It's huh. not coming. Weird. Yeah. Didn't work. It's almost like when you clear the cover, it doesn't come back. We'll fix it. We'll fix it. It's all good. Hey, Frantic and Dream, Purple Heart. Purple Heart. Frantic and Dream was injured in the war. <laughs> yeah, that's what a Purple Heart means, doesn't yes, it? Yes. Yeah, okay, it's a community <laughs> thing. Okay. Mm-hmm. I feel like, I feel like now I'm stalling for time and now I have I feel to. Like we should start. We should like... start. Okay, we'll start. Yeah. And we'll start by explaining the concept. So this is a new thing you see at the bottom of your screen called Pleja Vu. And this was actually in part inspired by Varys, who said last week when we did this, oh, like it kind of steps on dinner time. I don't really have time to watch like a four hour gameplay. I said, but where's your commitment? So I wanted to do something that was a little bit more succinct and pithy, but that would teach you the game and you get a really good sense of it by the end. And I also wanted to introduce a little bit more opinion and review, uh, because I know that the find the fun videos are, are uh, welcomed by a lot of people. A lot of people really enjoy those. If you've seen those, actually, maybe a mod. We've got new commands. If you put FTF bio, then it'll link it all to find the fun stuff. So I wanted to incorporate that. And I also also notice that when we do live playthroughs, and you, you might have noticed this if you were here watching Dave and I play A Feast for Odin, or any two-player game we've done so far, I'll draw a card and then I can't show you the card unless the, my opponent closes his or her eyes and I put it on the close-up cam. And I can't discuss strategy with you. And I think we tried something goofy with Dave when we played Zaya. I said, here, put these headphones on. So we have these big cans because our youngest is a drummer. So you put the headphones on it and mutes it a little bit. But uh, he did that and I explained what I was trying to do so he couldn't hear my strategy. And then later on, he put them on me and was explaining. When he was explaining, I was like, wow, I can hear every word he's saying. So this doesn't work at all. So we can't do that. I really wanted a way to play through a game where we could tell you our strategy and what we were thinking. So how do we do that? How do we make it pithy? How do we discuss our strategy with, with each other sitting there? How do we incorporate review stuff? Well, this is what Play Jeff Vu is all about. I'm super excited. So what we've done is we have already played this game. We played it a couple nights ago. And we made, let's show them our notes. We made copious, yes. copious notes. Here's my notes. And here's Cher Cher's notes, <laughs> separate notes about our moves and what we were doing in the game. Whose notes look prettier, by the way? Cher Cher's or my notes? Uh, Which one? <laughs> I I like mine, but uh, I know you, know, you like gotta yours. Make, you gotta make it so it makes sense to you, right? Uh, yes, so exactly. We played the game together. We made notes and, and meticulously copied it. We minuted our game, and this is a good one to do it with. And so what we're going to do is we are going to when we shoot this show, we're going to. 
uh, set the game up the way it was at the beginning of your game. Then we're going to play uh, a few turns and show you how that first round goes. And then we're going to like fast forward. If this was a longer game, maybe we would go right into the middle of the game and do like a vertical slice in the middle, play a few turns, <laughs> and then we'll fast forward to the end of the game. We have a couple of pictures. We know how to set up the game. So we'll set up the board state for how it looked at the beginning of the final round, and then we'll do those last few turns. So you get like vertical slices, like little snippets of how the game went. And in doing that, we've already played, so it's fine. We can discuss our strategy with you. We can do it in front of each other, and, and nobody's going to blow the game or anything. Doesn't that sound cool? I'm so excited about it. I think it's going to be cool. And then at the end, to cap it all off, what's the review stuff? At the end of these Pleja Vu videos, we are going to answer three questions every single time. First one is, what would you do differently if you were to play it again? Which is a question that we ask, I think, all the time when we Every play with time. our friends. Every yeah. single time we play, we ask that question. Yeah. So we're going to answer it. Often I won't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> because, yeah, Cheryl figures out a strategy and she's like, mm, I'm going to keep it for myself for the next time we play. <laughs> then she twirls her non existent. Yeah, then I lose anyway. Muscles. Well, <laughs> depends on the game. Yeah. So we're going to answer that question. The second question we're going to answer is, would you play it again? Like, what would, are you compelled to pull this off the shelf? Like, some games we play and we're like, oh my gosh. That was amazing, rack it up, we're playing again right now. And it's joking because we've just spent four hours playing the games. So we're not actually gonna do it, but we're eager to play it again. So would you play it again? And then the third thing we're gonna do is a concept I've had kicking around for a long time. It's called like uh, reviews in a word. This is called the final word. So we are each going to sum up the entire game experience in one single word. I'm so excited. This is gonna be so good. This is gonna be so good. Okay, you need a you need a Kona silence. You know what? For the uh, for the Dave Zaya stream, I was actually thinking about building a big Get Smart Kona silence that we get dropped out. But this that's a little bit. Uh, I don't have the engineering skills. No one can steal your notes if they can't read them. Ah, very good point. I should write my notes in code. Uh, all right. Got it. Thanks for the chapter mark. Thanks, Poppy. All right. So, so you like this idea, Mom, for game sets? Good. I'm glad. I'm glad. Now, for some games, it's going to work out differently than others. So, I thought maybe I could talk a little bit about the structure of this game. Um, this game, uh, Glass Road, is in four rounds, and with four rounds, uh, there's not a set number of turns per round. It's card play, and it kind of depends on which cards you play and which cards other people play. So, we'll probably say this again in the show, but. Um, it's a little bit like Race for the Galaxy, if you've ever played Race for the Galaxy. It's a little bit like Concordia, and it's a little bit like Crown of Amara-ish. You know, I don't know if you know Crown of Amara. Everybody gets nine cards, and they're the same nine cards. And you pick three cards, and those are the cards you're going to use in this round. Well, just like that, uh, everybody gets 15 cards. You pick five cards, and those are the five cards you have available to play in a round. Um, and just like Race for the Galaxy, the cards you play matter depending on whether somebody else plays them or has that same card in their hand. And just like Concordia, if you know Concordia, a little bit stuffy, just like Concordia, um, you have a hand with a selection of cards and each turn you just play one single card and, and the card lets you do the thing. That's kind of how it goes. Ryan by, oh good, look we're using the new commands. Do they work? <laughs> I don't even know if they work. Are you just using the commands and they're just not... They're just not working. Well, I think, no, I was gonna say, I know why they're not working. Here, maybe I do. Let me just do a little bit of mouse and then we'll get, the, we'll, get the, we'll get those commands working. I feel bad, I was like, here mods, you get new toys. By the way, they're all broken. Well, let me just call it up right here. Do, 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 do. I've got three monitors across the room that I gotta keep my eyes on. So, Did I you think like that- Did not save it? Uh, no, it's saved. I just think that I just have to log in or we'll be good to go. I have to connect. Nat chat is connected, and the Twitch streamer is connected, and those are the two steps that I missed. And so, ah. shortly, we're gonna try it again. Pseudo Ryan Bio. I forget what that means. What does that mean? That's a command in uh, in Linux. I don't know. A little bit too nerdy for me. I don't know. I hope we don't have any nerds in the chat. Do we? <laughs> Like, we'll put a poll up. Say yes if you're a nerd, because the, the mod should be able to take care of that. If you know oh, there it is. Oh. Hey, look, it worked. Ha-ha! <laughs> I think the volume needs to go up, if that's at all possible. Thanks for letting me know, Omelette. <sighs> oh, it's done! You know what? They're raiding, and they're raiding with me in jammy pants. Oh, my gosh. 
That's it. That's okay. that's the max we can go up. Hey, everybody! Thank welcome from the R and R show. Don't go anywhere because I just explained this cool concept that we're going to try. I'm going to repeat myself a little bit. Thank you for the patient people already chat. Thank you so much, uh, Head of Metal, for the follow. Thank you so much, uh, Nazgoth, for the follow. Appreciate it. Uh, stick around though, because this is where things get really exciting. What happened was I got a discount copy of Glass Road for Uwe, Uwe Rosenberg Month, which is all month in November and nights around a table. We're going to play it, but we're actually just going to step through moves that we've already done for a concept that I'm calling Play Ja Vu. Cheryl and I have already played the game. We're going to set up the game. Thank you so much for the follow, Jam Thank Norris. You. Thank you so much for the follow, Arrogant Meeple. Glad that you could all join us. Don't go nowhere. Don't go nowhere. It's exciting. <laughs> so we've already played the game. We've already made meticulous notes. Whoa! Yes, yes, yes. Yes, there it is. Thank you so much for the follow again, Arrogant Meeple. There it is. There's our notes. We're going to step through, and we have taken like pictures at every round of how the board state looked. So what this allows us to do is this allows us to play through the game. It allows us to play round one. My gosh, there's so many follows. Pen, pen age. Oh, thanks. I was on your stream the other night saying hello. Thanks so much for joining. So we're going to step through this. We're going to do round one and a couple of turns. Then we're going to fast forward all the way to round four, do a couple of turns, and then end it. Beginning off with a little bit of a teach, right? Hello, Eli Mraz. Thank you so much for joining us. Wow, so many new friends. So many new friends. So. <laughs> Don't go nowhere because it's all starting right now. The only drawback to this is we're going to do it exactly like the r, &R show does where we're going to drop off the chrome, we're going to get rid of the chat and all those cool notifications and sounds and buzzers and whistles and things that just went off aren't going to happen. Those are going to be completely suppressed. So just like the r, &R show, if you're familiar with that concept, you're going to be our studio audience. By the way, this is my wife Cheryl. I'm Ryan from Next Around the Table in case you're meeting us for the first time. So is everybody ready? to do this thing let me know in chat like yeah who we're ready we got to do it just got the new edition says uh, rukas just got the new edition of spiel was a great bargain uh cool what's in spiel this month uh, that's a little bio for me <laughs> Jammy streaming, yeah. You saw, did you see me? Just the moment before everybody came in, they're like, adjust your mic volume. So I'm like, I'm not wearing any pants. Da, 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 da. All right, let, let's do it. Mike Lizu says, all right, here we go. Okay. I'm gonna take out my earpiece. This is it. This is how we do it. Oh, you're taking your. This earpiece, is so. how we do it. All right. All right. And I'm going to push the button that makes me super nervous, but it's going to be the live to tape button. This is the one that takes all the chrome off. Wow. <laughs> is that your phone? <laughs> well, so far, no good. That's, Let's, my phone. Uh, that's your phone. Okay, so Sure Sure first has to fix her phone. What do I Go have to for do? It. You have to. I don't know. It's not like a, it's, it's, it's no good. It's. Yeah, that's what your phone looks like. Yeah, but it's on. It's on. You wave your hand underneath it. It's no good. It's no good. Wow. It's showing That's the board that. in my actual hearing that I'm Yeah, I'm plugging plug it back in. So she'll fix your camera. Let's take a look at my camera. Oh, no, it's been knocked. It's been knocked a few times. Let's make sure that it looks good so that when we switch to it, it's fine. Now, I've got some secret stuff hiding in the margins here. Again, this is like, this is stuff that you would only see if you were in the studio. Secret things. You can see my jammies at the bottom there. That's very class. Okay, here we go. <laughs> here we go. So those buildings up top aren't supposed to be showing so I'm gonna hide them and of course the pen isn't supposed to be showing so many things which we all set up like before this whole shebang began so let's get this stuff out of here let's get that stuff out of there let's get this stuff out of here and that looks like a nice shot doesn't it we need a little bit of room over in the side to do that how's your shot coming there sure sure blackness why is my phone being bad oh no uh, let me just double check uh, first it needs to be on. There's the first step. It's on. And second, second it needs to be... It really feels like one of those days. It does, right? There was, stuff breaks. Uh, there was a power outage at my work today and the doors didn't lock. Like it was just a nightmare day and <sighs> it just feels like one of those... I don't know, Mercury, Mercury in retrograde kind of days. This might be a very dire fix that we have to do, folks. We might actually have to... Yes, that's part of my strategy. <laughs> strategy yeah, yes, exactly. totally. Yeah, don't yeah. let anybody see your board. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> I might. What I might actually have to do 
And then what is this thing that's in the shot next to your head? That's your phone. Yes, I see, I see, I, I see. You have to do that. Uh, mm. Maybe you should put up a poll and whether or not who you think won. I can't do that because I think I have to shut down OBS entirely and restart it to get your phone working. Oh, terrible. It's the Whoa. worst thing that could ever happen on the stream. If you're sticking with us, thank you so much for your patience. Let me just go get a... Uh, Technical difficulties. I know, awful. This is worth it, though. This is going to be worth it. We expected this to happen. It's going to be so happen. much fun. It's going to be so good. It's going to be so good. Okay. okay. Let me go to... Do I need to do shut do down my phone? Um... Yes, yeah, shut down, turn off your phone. I'm going to go get a uh, RMTP thing. Yeah, do everything. Do all, all the things. All the things. Stream info. Let me just get a thing. And it's funny because I can't see like my monitor all that well. There's weird. a camera right like in front of me. Oh, it's OBS. We've got to stop it and start it again. Okay. So okay, but it's okay. It's going to be worth it. It's going to be worth it. Okay, here we go. Uh, copy. So you're going to see us go black and then you're going to see us come back. So, so just don't worry. Here we go. Um, we are confused and confuzzled, and we're not too sure why this is not... It's deciding not to go, basically, is what's happening. And I don't know why. Nah, it's a complete crash. We've just lost everybody. <laughs> oh, no! I don't know what to do to fix, is basically it. I don't know. Maybe we have to just like. Are the other cameras working? Yeah, everything else is working. Look, we're good oh, here. Hi, and hey, and we're good there. And we're good there. All that's not working is your phone suddenly decided to go no. It sure did. Huh. Any 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 last ideas for anybody who wants to help troubleshoot that? I would love to get it working. Hmm. I don't know. Off. On. The only thing that's different from last Tuesday is that I upgraded the iOS. Yeah. Yeah. And you're sure it's just not this thing just not connecting? Because that could... You shouldn't unplug it while the stream's going, but... That's enough to, to break it. Let's just see. Oh! We've got a black screen. <gasps> That's different. <gasps> hey! Oh! Hey! Look, it's up! Oh my god! Oh my gosh! I don't know what you don't just Don't touch did. it! Don't breathe! I know! Oh I my know. gosh! I'm trying to breathe! Oh. Well, that's what's in here! It happened! Holy crap! Oh, oh my gosh! <laughs> Is it still working? I think... Oh, hold on. Let's see. Yes, it's still working. We can see your thumbs, uh, but you've got oh, to point oh, it upside down. I put down. it the wrong way. I put it the wrong way. I'm so sorry. We can see our ceiling. Oh my gosh. I was so nervous about this not working, and so now it hasn't worked. It's one worked, of those so. days. I'm telling you. I'm happy that it hasn't worked, and if this... This is the worst thing that happens. The other thing that I mentioned off the top of the stream is... It's I'm a nice ceiling. <laughs> we upgraded our tiles. Yeah, we, I wish we'd show them again. But yeah, we, we had those like crumbly ones, you know, and then we went and got the nicer ones. Anyway, it's lovely. Okay. It looks like a museum down here. Um, a museum of nerddom. Okay. It still works? There's a shot. Do you want to frame it? Oh, Let's frame man. your shot. Uh, don't move that. Move the camera. Nah. Okay, sorry. You've got yes. sort of like a ball and socket joint, but you can't move that. Yeah, you want to move... Uh, yeah, so make sure you don't get the... Make sure you don't... This is all difficult. So if you unscrew this... Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Oh, dun, dun. You're okay? Yeah, there's, okay. Lots, there's lots of room. It's good. Okay, good. Well, we need a little bit of headroom over here for you to put your cards down. Yeah. And then this needs to be a little bit of space. So this is something I learned when I was doing design stuff from a person who went yeah. to design school and is better yeah. at it than I am. You always have to leave... The amount of spacing that you leave on the left edge of something should be close to the amount of spacing that you leave at the top and bottom of something. So what looks not good is this. It creates tension. See how that's a thinner strip on the left than it, that you have at the top and bottom? So you want to try to get all those gaps and paddings as even as, as you can. So like that, that looks nice. Right? Okay. <laughs> it doesn't leave a whole lot of room oh. for your cards over here, but that's okay. Stacy's asking... If someone can tell when we're back, but we're back. Are I don't we know. not? He, can you guys hear us? We think we're back. Oh, okay, good. Good, good, good. <laughs> okay, we are? Okay. Oh. What a day. What a day. Okay. All right. Are you ready to take this thing? Yes. All right, okay. Oh my yes. gosh. Oh my gosh. Last minute check. Let's make sure. What is this gigantic bar down here? I don't is this mm. the table? 
<gasps> we can't have that. Quickly, I, go, jammy pants, go. No, but um, I can go. Okay, you go. Get and closer. then you don't like. So just before we started this, Cheryl's like, "No, I don't. I don't like the way that this makes my chin." Oh, look. stop! What? Well, not the whole camera. What am I doing? Um, you are twisting the the twistable arm at the back. Yes, this twist thing? it, and you're tilting to get the that black bit. Yeah, there you go. And now oh, you're twisting your hands to tighten it. Twi oh, get it out of there. Up, up, up. So it's out. Up, yeah, up, up. I know, I know, I know. Okay, I'm trying can, to just adjust. Twist, it. twist, tighten it, tighten yep, it. Yep, yep, yep. Oh. <sighs> okay. Okay. <sighs> Serenity now. And now we'll it will be done. all perfect. We'll get this done. Oh my gosh. <laughs> And that's the stream, everybody. Thank you for coming. We, uh... It feels like one of those days where you just have to shower it all off. Okay, now. Can you tilt yourself anyway. a little bit like that? Yes, later in the stream, yes. Cheryl and I will be in the shower. No. No. <laughs> look, how, look how cute we look now. Yeah. Yeah, we're ready to go. Okay. Okay, so... I breathe, Poppy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so nervous about filming this one, too. I don't know why. Like, all day. Yeah, Cheryl was worried that I was going to yell at her when things went wrong. Well... I don't... I get you don't, crabby. You don't yell, wrong, you just get crabby. I do. It's I get, not the most fun. I get petulant. Petulant yeah. and annoyed. Okay, okay, so here's the format. Yes. <laughs> and this was after a talk with somebody I know who works at uh, who works at one of these big internet companies that gets millions of views on videos. And he made a few suggestions about what I should do in my own videos. And one of the suggestions was... The first few seconds, I knew this, I just haven't been practicing it. So the first few seconds of a video are crucial. And if you can hook them in the first few seconds, it's all about retention. You really got to get them to stick. Uh, so I know like a million people who just joined us from the r, &R show just floated out the door. So that's fine. I'm learning. Retention, I'm learning. So what I want to do is lead off with maybe an interesting sentence. And then we'll do the logo. And I got a really cool like brand ID logo thing to play, which you won't see because I'll add that in post. And then uh, after that, we'll do a little bit of an introduction. Remember, you kick it off. So I'll cue you. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, great. Okay. And I also have little markers that I can tap that work just like the <laughs> exclamation mark. I'm laughing at the comments. <laughs> what do they say? <laughs> this is the point where we're not supposed to be looking at the comments. <laughs> <I'm so sorry. laughs> My wife just gave me a look after you said that you get crabby when things go wrong. Is that something maybe that happens in your house of Mike and I see? Okay. Yeah. Are you ready? Okay. <sighs> Big breath, right? Mm -hmm. All I needed was one more brick, and then I brick my entire score. This is... One more time. Hit a marker. All I needed was one more brick, and then I bricked my entire score. We're replaying Glass Road right now on Pleja Vu. I don't have any music for it, but then the logo comes in, and then you're going to say, you're going to lead it off. Okay. Hi, this is Cheryl. And Ryan from Nights Around a Table. So Pleja Vu is a concept where we have already played the game, and then we'll take little vertical slices of it and replay it for you from the meticulous notes that we've kept. But first, a little bit about the game. This is a game called Glass Road by Uwe Rosenberg, and uh, it's a, a game where you take actions using cards and you're trying to build up your little piece of land. You own two fantastic factories, one that makes glass and one that makes brick, and your resources are tracked on these wheels. And something really interesting goes on with these wheels. So first I want to show you two fascinating mechanics that this game shows you that are I, I think are really, really cool. Let's start with the card play. So grab your cards, Cheryl, and let's show them. We each have a deck of cards. Mine are the red ones, Cheryl's are the blue one. And let me see the cards that you've got, Cheryl. They are the exact same cards. So every single player starts with the exact same hand of cards, same 15 cards. And what you do is the game takes place over four different rounds and everybody picks five of those cards to be in their hand. And then you just take turns picking cards and the cards let you do stuff. Well, what do you want to do? You want to build these buildings onto your little board. Maybe you got to clear out some space. 
you know, maybe you need to cut down a forest or two, maybe you gotta dig out a pond, and the buildings in the middle of the table let you score different amounts at the end of the game. But the interesting thing about the card play is that if you play a card and somebody else also has that card in their hand, you've effectively siphoned that card out of their hand. They have to play the card as well. Now, all of the cards have two different things on them that they can do. So the cultivator, for example, lets you build either a pond or a pit or a grove. And the second action is you get to buy a building and put it on your board. But if you play the card and one of your opponents has that same card in their hand of five that they chose and you siphon that card out and they have to play it as well, each of you can only do one of those two things on the card. You don't get to do both. If you manage to choose a card and it's exclusive, you're the only person who plays that card to the table, then you get to do both things on the card. Pretty cool, right? Yes. I don't think I've seen that in any other game. Although it does remind me a little bit of Concordia, where everybody has sort of the same set of cards, except in Concordia, remember there's a whole row and you buy interesting additional cards to, to beef up your hand. There's no such thing as, as that in this game. It's just the same 15 cards. The second thing that we'll take a look at is how resources work. I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna grab my brickworks and my glass building and put it just on the main camera for you here. So. This looks a little bit intimidating, I think, to start, and I think it freaked both of us out when we first looked at it, but let's demystify it a little bit. This wheel represents your glass making operation, and this wheel represents your brick making operation. This game takes place in the Middle Ages in the middle of the Bavarian forest, which is apparently rife with lots of nice quartz glass pits, so they could mine that, uh, sorry, not quartz glass, quartz sand, so that you can make glass out of it, right? So, um, and you need brick in order to fuel your furnaces in order to get the sand hot enough to make glass. So thematically, that's what's going on here. Each resource is represented by a little disc. So this one's glass, there's quartz sand, some food, some charcoal, some water, and some wood. Down here in the brickworks, this one's brick, and then again, there's another charcoal on here because you need, again, charcoal to fuel your furnaces to make those clay things into bricks. Uh, this is the clay that you need to break, make bricks, and here's the food that you need to feed to the bricks. No, no, no. To the workers who make the bricks. <laughs> you're, you're oddly silent. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it's pretty easy to track. So you've got a little, uh, the beam starts up the top on, on both of them, the glass works and the brick works, and here's a zero, which means you have zero quartz sand and you have zero charcoal. Well, look at this, you've got one food to start and two charcoal, three water, four wood. And then down here in the brick works, you've got zero brick and zero charcoal, but you've got one clay and you've got two food. So that's pretty easy to track. And then if you play a card that gets you stuff, let's say you play a card that gets you three food, well, all you would do is take this and go one, two, three additional food. So you started with two over here at the beginning of the game, and you got three, and now it says five. So that's pretty easy. But the spooky thing is that these wheels turn. So what does that mean? Well, if you notice that there are two wedges on the wheels that are brown, this three glass over here and this zero something over here, and then three brick over here and zero something here. If at any time, both of these brown wedges are completely empty while well, you have to turn the wheel. And let's look at what that looks like. Say off the top of the game, you played a card that got you one charcoal. And you decide, you can choose between your glassworks or your brickworks, but you decide, foolishly I might add, to take one charcoal in your brickworks. So you move one charcoal over to the one wedge. Aha, well look, the brown three wedges empty and the brown zero wedges empty. So the game says you gotta move that wheel. Duck a duck a duck a duck a duck. Boom, and it's moved. Which now means that you've used all this food and this charcoal and this clay to build one brick. Look, now we have one brick. However, in moving the wheel, it's decreased by one every single other resource. So now you're down a food. Now you've got zero charcoal and zero clay. You think, well, yeah, I just got that charcoal. Why? <laughs> Why am I at zero already? Well, because it got consumed in making that brick. Isn't that interesting? So I'm going to move it back to the way it was at the beginning of the game. Do another example up here. So let's say you get one quartz sand. Well, the game says, oh, actually you get two quartz sand, let's say, and you get one food, for example. Well, now the zero wedge, the brown one is empty, and the brown three wedge is empty, so the game 
forces you to turn that wheel and now you've gone down a tick in all of these five resources. But after turning it, the brown zero wedge and the brown three wedge are still empty. Well, you gotta turn it again, immediately. So now you're down two of everything, really, of these higher resources that you had more of, but you've made two glass. Ho, 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 ho. Now, that was a really crazy mechanic, and I didn't understand it at first, and try to get your head around it when you first start to play. Challenging? Very challenging. I had no idea what was going on. And as you'll see through our play, uh, that misunderstanding kind of came back to bite me. <laughs> but... So what we're going to do is we have our board set up for the way they looked at the beginning of the game. That's my board right there. Let's take a look at Cheryl's board. It looks very much the same because there's a prescri prescribed position of all the different forests and pits and groves and lakes. So everybody's board should look exactly the same. Everybody begins the game with the same three buildings. This one up here, it's pre-printed, gets you one point at the end of the game per glass that you have sitting in your glassworks. This one's the same thing except for brick, one point per brick. And then the building in the middle scores you half a point for every quartz sand that you have just sitting around on your glassworks. So that's the starting digs. Now what's random about the game is these buildings that are dealt out to the middle of the table. The costs are down the left hand side, the points that they get you are on the top right side, and what they do for you of course are in the middle. And there's three different rows and three sort of different styles of buildings. These ones are all about, the purple ones are all about converting something into something else. These ones are just straight off one hits. You build them and you get the stuff on the tile and that's all the building does for the rest of the time. And then these ones down here, see there's little asterisks on the points bags. These ones are metascoring opportunities. So depending on what you have going on in your board, you might get extra points, you know, board games, you know how they work. So that is the situation. So this is gonna be randomly dealt. And what we haven't shown you on the table is I have just like modest short stacks of buildings here. Well, the game actually comes with a stack of buildings in each pile that's like that tall. Look at this, I'll turn it to the side. Huge pile of buildings. And Cheryl, like how many of these buildings did we get through when we played the game for the first time? Um, it would have been like f five or six buildings, I think, all told. Like very few, right? Yeah. So this is a game where if you're going to... It encourages repeat plays because you're definitely not going to get the same arrangement of buildings that you did the first time. And you're going to see tons of new buildings and tons of different configurations as you play. There's the teach. I think we're ready to rumble. So in round one, we both chose five cards from our hands. So let's pick those five cards that we chose, we'll splay them out, and we'll explain why we each chose the five cards that we did. Okay. Okay, take a little bit of break. Here, I'll <laughs> pick. There's an editing point. Okay, good. So far, so good? Yes. Chat, you guys doing okay? <laughs> I like the gold colored pits and the blue ponds too, so bright. Yeah, they're pretty, aren't they? I can already feel my brain melting. Yeah, that brain melting feeling is going to get more punctuated as we go because stuff gets crazy, man. So uh, so we're gonna both refer to our notes and we're gonna dig out the cards that we used in round one. Let's see what I got here. I got the, that guy, and I got the shit to do to do. Just that guy. And this was all based on like some pretty, uh, <laughs> Pretty uh, shorthand notes, let me just say. So I hope I've, I I took good enough. This is the first time we've done this. I don't know if this is going to work. Uh, and I got this guy, and I got... Do, 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 do. One last guy. I feel like I took more detailed notes, but... Yeah, you took way more detailed notes. Than, so this guy, this guy, the fish farmer supplier, and one more fuel collector. Okay. There are some nuances to this card play too that we'll go over as we uh, as we chip along. Yeah, that rondelle is wild. Yeah, it is wild. It's uh, it's really hard to wrap your mind as well eh, around, as you will soon see. <laughs> All right, you got them, Shasha. Yep. So what we're gonna do is when we show them, we're just gonna splay them sort of like along here. So you get this area and I get this area, right? Okay. Um, Should we play them first? Face up. I'll go. I'll go first. I'll display mine and then then demonstrate and then uh, you display yours. All right. Okay. okay. Sounds good. Okay. Yep. All right. You ready? You got your cards. I chose to begin with these five cards. I chose the supplier, 
the fish farmer, the charcoal burner, the fuel, feudal lord, and the fuel collector. Now, this is secret. Share Share, when we were playing, she wasn't allowed to see my face-up cards, but we're doing a little bit of strategizing here, so I'll explain why I chose the cards that I did. Most of these are resource cards. I looked at the fuel collector, and the fuel collector car uh, card gives you one charcoal per card in your hand. So obviously, the earlier you play the fuel collector, the more charcoal you get. So I thought, well, maybe that's a good one to get out as early as possible. The feudal lord is interesting because you get to draw three buildings, and those kind of go in like your private stash. Nobody else can build those buildings. These are just buildings that, that you alone can build. So of course it makes sense, I think, that if we have common buildings out here that we're all racing to build, it's nice to have your own personal stash of buildings that you can only build from. Charcoal burner? I thought charcoal was going to be more important than it actually turned out to be, and then it wasn't, and then it got more important again. So we'll see how that works. The fish farmer gives you a couple food and a food per, uh, per pond, and the supplier just gets you two of anything and lets you build something. Those were my picks. Sure, sure. What did you go for? Okay. I went for the Cultivator. Let's go right there. So that's the first one. Um, because I really wanted to place uh, a pond or forest pit. Actually, uh, no, it was a pit. Um, and you'll see. So, And then you can also build something. And I thought, well, building must be important because it's just building. That's the name of the game. So, then I chose the water carrier because I liked that it gave me a bunch of different resources and I thought that sand was going to be more important than yeah. it turned out to be. And you don't and know the first time you weird. play, right? Well, and, and then I, you did see on your board here too that um, what are yours? Uh, you get half a, a half a point per one sand, so I thought, well, maybe I'll need a lot of that at the end. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, anyway. So then the next one I ended up playing was the Slash and Burn Farmer. Oh, we'll talk about play order in just a second. Right. That's crazy. You can throw them out in any order you want. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, because I wanted to clear some land on my board, uh, remove a forest so that I could place more stuff. Now we should say the forests are stuck there. You can remove a grove or a pit or a pond at any time you want, but the forests you need somebody like the Slash and Burn Farmer in order to cut it down for you. Right. And then I chose the pit worker because I wanted another pit. Going all in on sand, just like I went all in on charcoal. Yep. And then your last one? My last one was a carpenter. Carpenter just gets you wood and lets you build a building. Yeah. Now, what we didn't mention is down here in this little penny, this little orange flag, this is what it actually costs to activate the person. So the cultivator doesn't cost anything, but the water carrier you have to feed a food in order to use one of the two, or both if you're the exclusive card player of that one. So that's how it works. Let's scoop them all up, and we'll actually go in the order that we played these cards and see how our strategies affected each other. Are you ready? I am. Who was first player? I was. You were, so you get the yeah. start player green chalice. Sure. All right. Excellent. So for my first turn, I played the cultivator. I wonder if we should play those to the middle of the table. Yeah, I think there's more room where we were playing them at the middle of the table. So we'll go left and right at the beginning. Do you want to start, kick that off again? Okay. Okay. And we'll go, we'll, we'll get you on the middle. Back uh, <laughs> my wheel. Okay. All right. I did work. I actually really get that grow straightened out. Back my wheel. Hold on. Okay. So for my first card, I played the cultivator. All right. Um, which allows me to build a pit and uh, a building. Now, if I had the cultivator in my hand, I would have to play the cultivator to one of these two slots over here on the right side of my board. But as you saw, I don't have any cultivator, so sure, sure is good to run off with that. So, I built a pit, and what I did was I put my pit here, I believe, and then... Because you were the exclusive player of the Cultivator, you get to do both things on the card, in any order you want, by the way. Cheshire could have built something first, and then did the pit, but Cheshire decided to put the pit first, and then build something. So what did you actually build? Did you have enough money to do stuff? So the pit's just free, and mm -hmm. then I ended up, I purchased the clay basin, which is a free building. Right up here. Oh yeah, there's no price on it. You saw that and I didn't. Yes. Very good. Very good. Yeah. So. Where did it go? So it went, actually the pit, did that make sense? What did the notes say? It went here. <laughs> Are you sure? I think so. Yeah. Let's just double check the notes and we can back that up. 
Ooh. We have pictures of we everything. Have the pictures. We're like, we're, so this is it where you thought it was supposed to be? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we'll go back, uh, pick it back up, and we'll uh, we'll start from the top of that. So grab it off your board. Okay. Yes. And I purchased the clay basin, which I put here. And then, because it's a purple building, I'm able to use this action whenever I want, but I decided to use it right away. So I then paid one water here, and then I paid one food from my brick wheel. And that was my turn. Did you get anything for that? You paid the water and the oh, food and to I do what? You're right. For what reason? To get three um, of the clay. Oh, there you go. So one, two, three. That gets moved. That makes more sense. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> I have to look at my notes and see where I actually married. Food collector, water, try to work. All right, so for my card, I played the fuel collector. And so, do you have the fuel collector in your hand, Cheryl? No, I do not. No, great. So it's great. I have an exclusive player of the fuel collector. So that means I have to pay him a water, and I get a charcoal per card in my hand, and I get two wood. So pay the water. Down we go on the water, and I have four cards left in my hand. So I'm going to get four charcoal. I can get it either in my glassworks or in my brickworks, and I decided to take it in my glassworks. Four, and I also get one, two wood. And I took those also in my glassworks. Why was I taking them in my glassworks? I have absolutely no idea, because I had never played the game before. <laughs> so for my next turn, I played the water carrier. I do not have the water carrier, so you're exclusive on that, which means you get to do both things on the card. Yes, so I paid a food, and I paid it from my glass wheel, so... This is going to go down, um, and the card gives me four water, one wood, and one sand. So I'm going to go up one, two, three, four on the water, one wood, one sand. Great! For my next card, I played the Feudal Lord. Cheryl, do you have the Feudal Lord in your hand? Um, that's what I was missing. I thought I took the Carpenter? I did not take the Carpenter. I took the Feudal Lord. You didn't take the Feudal Lord, did you? I did. She I took had the Feudal, feudal Lord. Lord. I messed that up. Oh, go get the Feudal Lord. That's the worst. So now I don't get to do both things on the Feudal Lord card because Cheryl had it in her hand. Now I, I should... The carpenter. <laughs> I should point I out that, that this is a little Bad bit... Bad notes. Okay, let me back it up. I should... Put it out in there. I should point out that the two-player version works a little bit different than if you were playing this with three or four players. The way three or four players works is everybody chooses a hand of five from their 15, and then everybody, sort of in Race for the Galaxy style, puts a card up in front of them at the same time, and then you flip it all over. So, if you play a card that somebody else has elsewhere in their hand, you draw it out of their hand. But if you play a card that somebody has played out on the table, uh, that's, uh, that's exclusive. I don't know if I explained that correctly at all. Because we didn't play three or four players, and I might have messed that up. So we're just going to cut that entire thing up. Okay, back to the two player. Great. Ah, oh, so you played the Feudal Lord. That's the worst. Let me see it. Bring it down on the table. Right here. Okay, we're going to do that again. Can you go this way across the table? Because I'm finding when you're popping them over here, Can we I can't. Ask a quick question? Yeah, what's the quick question? So when we played all the cards that we had, yes, I put carpenter. I had carpenter, but I didn't have a carpenter. Do you want to pick it up? Do you want to redo it? It's okay. I think it's fine. It's not a huge screw up because you said it. You corrected it, right? Oh, okay. It's fine. But you're filming it and you're going to cut it. You're going to cut it together. So you say as long as we can, if we can do it, we should do it? Can we go back and recreate that moment perfectly? No. I don't think we can. Okay. Or can we? Let's keep going and we'll make a note of it and we'll see if we Maybe feel confident. Maybe you can just cut over it and put... Sure. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'll put a <laughs> yeah. quack. I'll put a, I'll put a subtitle on there. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. It's hard to go back because I feel like I'm getting frowsier and sweatier as we do this. Yeah. So <laughs> people okay. will be like, okay, you can you edit and post. Why is Ryan glistening <laughs> at this point? And he went, now he's unsweaty and now he's super sweaty. What's going on? They'll notice. They'll notice. All right. Edit. Okay. Edit. okay. Um, but actually I'm wrong because you don't put it on the table. You put it in one of those two I, slots because, okay. Yeah, yeah you're right. So, we'll get there. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Let me, let me start. Yeah. You played the feudal lord? I did. Oh, so if you play one that I played, your card has to go into one of those two slots at the side of your board. So let's see it. Prove to me that, ah, oh, there it is. Yeah, the feudal lord. So what this means is that if there was a cost requirement on the card on this banner, we would both have to pay it in order to take one of these two actions. But because neither of us played this card exclusively, we each have to pick either the top or the bottom action. Neither of us gets to do it twice. So. Since it's my turn, let's go with what I did first. The Feudal Lord lets you draw three buildings, uh, one from each of these categories. So the three buildings that I drew were the Charcoal Kiln, the Fishery, and the mansion. Of these three, I was particularly interested in the mansion. It's very expensive. It costs two wood, two glass, two clay, but look at this. It gets you two points per adjacent grove. So if I slammed it down right there, I would get two... Oh, well just two because look, they've arranged the boards very cleverly from the top of the game so that there aren't adjacent groves to, you know, one thing. So what I would need to do is I would need to get rid of this one, get rid of this one, build one here, get rid of the pond, build a grove here, and build a grove here if I wanted to make good and get the eight maximum points from the mansion. This was also the point of the game where I was kind of figuring out, like, I don't think scores are going to be huge in this game. Like, just looking at the kind of the number of points that all the buildings get, like, it's they're going to be minuscule scores. Am I wrong? No, my first thought was scores would be about 15 points. Yeah, something like that. So when we're looking at, like, buildings like the ones that are pre-printed on your board, this one half a point per quart sand, you know it's not going to be something like Aura at Labora where the goal is to get 500 points or something. So those are the three buildings that I pulled from my Feudal Lord. So those are in my private collection and I can build from them whenever I use a card that has a build action. What did you pull, Cheryl? What did you... <laughs> Which three buildings? Oh, I pulled the... Potash Manufacturer, the Forest Hut, and the Estate, which I will move down so people can see. Great. Now, of these, which one was the most interesting? Like, did you formulate a strategy based on these three buildings that you pulled? So, I actually was really interested in the Estate because it gave you two points per set of pit, uh, grove, and, and pond. Mm -hmm. And I thought that I could probably make good on that. All right, fair enough. Now is your turn. Which card did you play? Right. So I played the Slash and Burn Farmer. What does he let you do? I did not have him in my hand, so you're safe. You get to do both things. Yes. So he allows me to remove a forest. Oh, so that's the payment cost. So you got to ditch a forest from somewhere on your board. Which one's it going to be? Yep. And I believe... And it's not the worst thing in the world, right? Ditching a forest. At least it frees up spots that, for you to put buildings in. I believe I did this one. Hold on, we can back it up. I'll take a look at the picture. Yeah, it was the top left one. Yeah. Okay, so back it up, put it back down. Okay. I'll mark an edit point. Thank you. So which forest did you take off your board? I took off this one. Ah, oh, chainsaw. No, it's Middle, middle Ages. No chainsaws. Yes. I'll also cut bad jokes. <laughs> And he allows me to take two coal and two uh, food, and I took it from the brick wheel. So one, two, and one, two. And it, then I had to move the needle. Why did you have to move the needle again? Just to reinforce this rule? Because both of these uh, dark spots yeah. are empty. Ah, okay. So, so you move it, it once. It moves to catch up to Oh, now back it up. Why did you have to move it that far? If you, I thought you just had to move it once. Oh, I see. When you moved it once, 
put it in one tick, yep. and now both of those spots are still empty. So you have to move it a second time, which effectively reduced your food by two and reduced your clay by two. Yes, correct. Oh, but how many brick do you have now? I now have two brick. So that's not terrible because we noticed that a lot of these buildings here, like it costs brick and clay and wood to build things. So brick's not a bad material to have on hand when you want to build something. Correct. Okay, so for my next card, I played the fish farmer. Did you have the fish farmer in your hand, Cheryl? I did not. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, so the fish farmer, since I'm exclusive, I get to take, I get to pay him a charcoal from one of my two wheels, take two food, and then I get a food per pond on the board. Once again, I thought food was going to be a little bit more important than it actually turned out to be. But this is what I did. I took two food on each one of my wheels. Cheryl, what was your next card? My next card was the pit worker, which is why I was pretty excited about the estate because I already knew that I was going to be adding pits. Um, so I thought, oh great, another one to the collection. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Let's see what it looked like. So, so you get to build a pit and take a clay, and then you get to take either quartz sand or clay per pit that you have on your board. Once again, right. I can look at the picture for you if you want to see. Yeah, I put it here. Oh, you already know where it goes? Yeah. Okay, cool. So I put Just my... wait, 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 wait. Go. Okay. So I put my pit here. I built it there. And he gives me four sand because I get the sand per... Per pit that Per pit. That and you I also have. get a clay for the pit that you put down. Clay for the pit that I put down. No, it was an and or, there's a slash. But look at the top. Oh, you're right. I got one clay as well. Okay, so let's back that up. Yes. Okay. So my pit worker gives me one clay, which I'll use here, and gives me four sand. One, two, three, four on my wheel. Now, how many cards do you have left in your hand? I have zero cards left. So this is kind of an interesting thing about the two-player game. It's not quite the way the three- and four-player game works, but with the two players, you just keep going back and forth until one of you runs out of cards, which was kind of a bummer for me in that first round because Cheryl got through all five of her cards and I still had two of my cards left. So that can happen. And it's interesting because when we take a quick look at how round two went, we won't do every turn, but you'll see the opposite happened. I was able to play all of my cards and Cheryl only got three of hers out. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up round two and take a quick look at kind of what happened. We'll go through round three and what happened there and then we'll play fully round four so you get to see the thrilling conclusion to our game of Glass Road. <sighs> Breathe. Hit <laughs> no point. Okay. <laughs> How's this going, Chet? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Cheryl Gremlin. I think yeah. it's, uh, I think it's uh, maybe a tiny bit boring. A tiny bit boring. We'll add music and we'll cut out all the pauses and of course all the mistakes so it'll get a bit more zippy. Uh, so I don't know. I still I still have high hopes for this. I'm excited. So what we're gonna do is we took pictures of how it looked at the beginning of round two and how it looked at the beginning of round three. So we're not gonna go through every single turn in round two. We'll just like we'll just uh, look at it and we'll set up for the beginning of round two, end of round two, and we'll just make a couple comments. So we'll do the same thing with round three, and then we'll actually play round four, the final round. How does that look? Is that good? All right, there's your cards. So what happens at the end, referring to our pictures at the end of round next, uh, end of round one. So that's Cheryl's board. We took a picture of Cheryl's board. We took a picture of, and that's the end of round two. Don't tell me I didn't take a picture of the board at the end of... I did. Uh, there's your Lord Dry... Uh, and Ryan ended around 7. Cheryl ended around 7. Cheryl end of 2-7. I didn't take a picture of the board and which, <laughs> which buildings come out. Wait, that's okay. We can... We can end of 2-7 is the end of round... Yeah, but I didn't take a picture of the middle of the table. 1-7? That's the end of the first round. 2-7 is the end of the second round. Yeah. I don't have a picture of the middle of the board. But it looks like this building is the uh, the sand pit. So that's up there. That's the only change is the sand yep. pit got drawn. Okay, cool. So we draw the sand pit. So we'll just do a quick thing where we say... Uh, do, do, do. 
I hope this works. All this, all this effort. I hope this works. I hope this looks good. I don't know. I feel like taking a poll. Do you think this will work? <laughs> I designed a logo and everything. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Are you ready? Yep. So in round two, uh, <clears throat> in. So at the beginning of every round, if there are any empty spots on the building board, you fill them going across the row. And the one that we, no, I gotta pull it from here. And the mouse is in the shot. <laughs> okay, here we go. So at the end of every single round, if there are empty spots on the building board, you have to fill them. And remember, these different color buildings go in these different color rows. So we flipped up the sand pit in that spot. We each pulled five cards from our hand of 15. So you get your choice back of all 15 cards. I chose these five. Cheryl went and chose five. And just like in the first round, uh, I was the first player now, so that means I got the green chalice. I played a card, Cheryl played a card, I played a card back and forth. And any time that I played a card that she had in her hand, she had to play it to one of those two slots at the side of her board. And any time that she played a card that I had in my hand, I had to do the same thing in my slots at the side of the board. And what's an interesting rule about this game is if your opponent plays a card that's in your hand, and the rule is you're forced to play it, if both of your slots are already full of cards that that opponent has siphoned out, you actually are not forced to play that card anymore. You're kind of like safe, which means that since you're not forced to play it on the very next turn or a turn after that, you're able to play it and do both things on the card because now you know it's going to be completely exclusive. Your opponent has already used that card, at least in a two-player game. So we'll zip ahead to the end of round two and tell you kind of what happened. <sighs> Breathe. Right, so let's go take a look at the picture. Uh, end of round two. Ba -ba -doo -doo -doo. End of round two. I think if I just look at the picture, it'll be the easiest thing. <laughs> Everybody in chat is so patient with us, aren't they? Yes. Oh my gosh. Um, are you going to show the cards that we each played? Uh, no, we'll just like do a real like quick, quick. This one's going to be like super mega quick. Um, so that was my board. I actually was able to build the mansion. Pretty cool. I built the mansion. I got rid of this and this. I got rid of that. And then I was able to put a grove right here. So building up towards that. And for some bizarre reason, I put a pond down here. I don't know why, but I'll figure that out later. I put a pond down there. And what else am I missing? That and I put, I was able, wow, this, I did all this in two. Wow, this is pretty good. And then I was able to put a, another grove down here. So that was like my big play for that whole round. I think I can explain that pretty easily, I think. And which five cards did I choose? I chose the Builder. Do, 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 do. The Builder. I chose the Pit Worker. The Pit Worker. I chose the Pond Builder. Pond Builder. I chose the Forest Manager. Forest Manager. And I chose the Cultivator. So what's funny about this concept is that, uh, like, I tried to, when I was doing, like, uh, I guess, media literacy with my kids, I was teaching them about editing. Well, this is when they were young, because I wanted them to not be hoodwinked by certain types of media. And so I explained to them that whenever you see a cut between shots, right, and I, just, I taught them, like, what a smash cut was, whenever you see a cut between shots, um, the time that elapsed between, like, in real life, between those two shots, could have been a second, it could have been an hour, it could have been days, it could have been weeks, it could have been months. You're seeing it in a twinkling like that, but it, you know, they could, those two shots could have been spaced out four months apart. You have no idea. So always be aware, look for cuts in things because any amount of tomfoolery or chicanery can go on in between that smash cut, right? In that margin. So what's funny is that when you guys are watching this now, I mean, that door opening that you just heard, you're gonna be watching it and you'll be like, I do remember when I was watching this, a moment when Cassie came and opened the door to the basement and came in and that wasn't in there. Well, it's, we, we, we cut it. How's it going, Cass? Are we, we having get... dinner or can I make one of my, my boxes? You make whatever you want, my love. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Cassie. <laughs> Uh, are you going back upstairs, Cass, or are you hanging out here for a bit? I'm going back upstairs. Okay. <laughs> Did you 
Do so, you need something? No, I was just, it's funny because I was just explaining to the folks watching that that's uh, like, that, that is the perfect example of what, like a moment when we were cut. So the entire sequence of you coming downstairs, opening the door, asking uh, if we were going to make dinner or not, uh, that's all, uh, that's going to be excised from the final. I'm trying to lure the kids in with the promise of games. No, the, yeah, that's not a big, uh, it's not a big draw for our kids. Uh, <laughs> our kids don't really like board games no, all you. that much. Yeah, no thank you, says Cassie in the background. Yeah. So, <laughs> right. Uh, let me just make sure that we're setting. Do you have your board set up okay, Cheryl? No, I'm just trying to set up my wheel. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah the wheels. Thank you. We're going to get the wheels done. Uh, I took a picture of my wheel, so my wheel looks like... Let me just get it on the oh, camera. You took so a can... picture? Yeah, I took a picture of both of our wheels. Do you want to see a picture of your wheel? Well, I feel like I'm hogging the notes. That would have been helpful. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll do it in two I'm seconds. I'm literally doing... This, this, this. Okay, uh, here's the picture of yours. Uh, M27, Cheryl, M27, there's your wheels. Look. So I'll go over to Cheryl's camera. And there's a wheels there. And then on that space. And then this goes here, this goes here, this goes here. This goes here, this goes here. Oh, did I? Uh, I think I missed something too. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I built the, uh, that oh, artist's wait. colony. That's not your shot, right? Right there, Cheryl. There. Yeah. Okay. Good. I got it correctly. Thanks. Okay. Cool. All right. Are we ready? I'm ready. Great. Are you, so, are you able to like pretty pithily sum up what you did in round two? Um. Almost had a few, some success with a few games, but not recently. Yeah, but I'm, I think your kids are quite young, though, right? My husband isn't a fan either. He only plays when forced. Oh, uh, and don't you feel bad? Aww. Don't you feel bad forcing people Sorry. to play board games? It's like, have fun, damn it! Like, I don't find this fun. What do you mean? I have to use my brain? What kind of torture is We're this? We're basically forcing our kids if we ask them to. Yeah, it's it's been rough. It's been a rough. They're teenagers. They just they don't have time for us. Yeah, it, we could be doing anything. We could be doing something it that they really matter. enjoy. It wouldn't, it wouldn't matter. matter. It wouldn't matter. They wouldn't like it because we were involved. You know what I mean? So, like, say they like skateboarding. Yep. If I, like, threw on a helmet, I'm like, let's go skateboarding together. It'd be like, no, no. skateboarding's lame. <laughs> I'm over skateboarding. <laughs> no, I'm done. It's not cool anymore. As soon as your parents do it, it's not interesting. Yeah. Ah, uh, man. Very true. I remember being that age. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And the pandemic made it way the worse. The pandemic was the worst. Now because... they're just like, I, we're all like, I'm sick of your face. Can you just leave? Yes. Vacate the room, please. Put a, a mask minute. on. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, and I mean, I don't mean a mask. I mean like a full on <laughs> Mission Impossible, you look like a different person mask because I'm tired of it. Yeah. Uh, Ryan's correct. Anything your parents did is automatically uncool. That's true. <sighs> so that's why I do all the drugs I can. <laughs> Drugs and illicit, unprotected, dirty, dirty sex. That's no. no? All right. <laughs> Look, kids, it's not cool. Snort. No. Uh, no. <laughs> Jokes. All right. <laughs> okay, relax. <laughs> um, so did you take any buildings off of here? I did. I took two. Do you grab them already? Yeah. And I took two. You took two and I took two, but there's only three things missing. Oh, right. I took one for my personal supply. Okay. Get, okay, great. I think we're good. Great, yeah. Uh, great. Are we ready to go? <laughs> yeah, you go first. I go first. Yeah. And I was the first player, right? Um... Okay. Yes, you were. Okay. Think. Okay, good. So round two was a bumper round for me. I knew that I wanted to build that mansion at all costs. So I would need to play cards that would let me get some clay and let me get some materials. And, and I, was, I was constantly keeping in mind that that mansion had to be surrounded by groves. So I did a little bit more with the landscape people that let me build different, you know, different groves on my board. And of course, the builder would let me build something twice. There were two buildings that I want to build and I actually was able to snag them. These were the two buildings. Now, the 
buildings have either wood or brick on them. If they have brick on them, that means that they upgrade an existing building. So this artist's colony that I was able to build in round two has to go on top of the glassmaker's colony. And there's a little note on the tile, it's pretty hard to read, but it tells you which building it has to replace. So I was able to build the glassmaker's colony, which got me an extra glass. And with the resource cards I played, I was able to get more stuff in order to build that mansion. Do you remember when I got that from the, uh, from the feudal lord? I was able to put that on my board. And with the landscape guys, at any time you're allowed to take, a, like rip a pond off of your board or a grove or a pit, just not these big forest tiles. So I started, you know, terraforming my landscape, ripping up ponds, ripping up pits, and putting down groves. So by the end of round two, I was able to mostly surround that mansion with groves, and I thought I was in pretty good state. What did you do in round two, Cheryl? So in round two, um, I really wanted to um, build that estate that I got from the feudal lord, um, this one right up here. Um, so I needed, I wanted more food because I, um, my food was too low, so I ended up taking, or I thought it was too low, I ended up taking these cards right here. Let's see if there are any repeats. Look, the forest manager was a repeat, so I pulled yes. that out of your hand. You did, and I was upset about that because I wanted to, I wanted the food, and I also wanted to put a forest down, and I, what I ended up doing, because you pulled the forest manager, was I only took the food. Oh, so, so you didn't get to put the forest down. That was kind of a bummer. Because you were trying yeah. to collect sets of landscapes, right? Yes, yeah. I was working towards the estate even though I haven't built it yet. That's interesting strategy. So... So let's put these here. So we both chose the builder and we both chose the... What's the other? The forest manager was the other duplicate. So the way it worked out was that I was able to play all five of my cards and you were only play, playing three of your cards. Yep. And two of yours went unused. Just like it was the reverse of what happened in round one. So that's what we look like at the end of round two. Now we're going to set up for round three and give you a couple comments about how that went. Such a cast of characters, isn't it though? We noticed though, did you notice something? Hold on, people in chat. Tell me if you noticed something about <laughs> all of these characters on these cards. Perhaps you do, perhaps not, but... Take a look. I'll splay them all out while we get set up for the next round. Mm-hmm. See, see if you can play win the guessing game that I've posed while I look at the pictures of what i got to set up. What do all of these people have in common? Okay, so the end of round two. So the end of three looks like this. So the kiln... The district office, the colonization house, no. Colonization house got built. Did you build it? Yes, you did. Or you took it anyway. You built it, right? Yeah. Colonization house, gone. Second, the winery is over here. The greenhouse, the country house, Shazam, the clay depot. And then down on the bottom, we've got the glazier, the plant nursery, the shipway. It was another one that came out replace that one and the coal storage so what's up here the processing plant the sand screening plant bang right there so that's how it looked at the end of round three go figure out what you did in round three what did I do in round three I played the here I'm gonna scoop all these guys up and see if chat has guessed what we noticed about all the people they're obviously drawn by a child. <laughs> Crudely drawn, says Malcor. Yeah. <laughs> I noticed something too. I don't know if this is like a German thing. Can or you if just I, show me the um, photos of mine? I can, I can. I don't know if this is a German thing or if I keep seeing the same illustrator all the time. Hold on, let me hang out on this. Everyone's skin is like really weirdly orange. And this happened on the cover too. Like, look at this. When I put my own face on this guy, when I did the little Photoshop drop and Cheryl's face over here, like maybe it's the glow from the furnace or the glass or something, but everyone's, you know, painted like a McDonald Land character. Like, like the, they're all, they got the, the powder of the, of the hamburger. It's really weird. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, what else do we say? They're all dudes. Yes, they're all dudes. What a lovely group of middle-aged white men. Yeah, not a whole lot of diversity in these cards at all. 
<laughs> oh my god. Oh, no, Summer Hatless. Yeah, we're almost playing like a game of Guess Who. I'm sorry. Does, does your specialist have a beard? Uh, great. Cheryl wants to see a picture of what her board looks like. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, at the end of three, you were... That's Ryan end of three. That's Cheryl end of three. Okay. Okay, cool. So the end of three. That's what I have? So yeah, we're going to go... We didn't get beginning of three, so we'll go end of three. I'll count my guys out. ba da 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 Pond Builder. I know you're going to... Look above the camera. I'll put this on here. Mm, actually, I'll go to your camera. The pond builder, the clay worker, the slash and burn guy, forester, and the supplier. Forest manager. Right. Oh no, that's oh, that's where it has to go. Supplier. Okay, those are my guys. Tell me when you're okay for me to flip it. You Almost get. Here. We're gonna move the chalice back to you. I did remove that for us, so both removed. Great. Good, good, good. You can switch. Um, yeah, I just need to know my wheel. Oh, your wheel's up there. Oh. Okay. Uh, that should be moved to. I don't know, but I think this is gonna be like a 15 to 20 minute video by the time we're done. Does that sound about right? No. Even though it's like. Going on an hour and a half right now. It's not going to be that long when we're when we chopped it all down. I don't think. Depends on how much of my own blather I can excise. You got it? good. Uh, no, I don't. Oh, I haven't oh. done the brick yet. Oh, the I'm brick. So sorry. No I problem. Can't. You're in bar two mode on brick. See the oh one for yeah one, for, one glass. for glass. Yeah. Okay, and then brick was put zero. it on. Make sure the bar's in the right spot. Yeah. Yeah, brick was zero here. Did your bar move backwards? How did that happen? How's your bar moving backwards? Wait a second. <laughs> Wait a second. Well, it... It's on two. It should be on two from the top. One, two. It's on two. The, the picture's just angled. Oh, so it is there, right? Yeah. No. No, two. There. Yes. Yep. It is there. Yep. Okay, and then that, this should be on six, I think. Yeah. And Second last one. This is there. on yep. that, and this is on that. Okay, cool. Cool, my Let's turn. Go. Right into three. Well, I gotta do my thing too. So my bar moved. Let me just put it on my camera. My bar moved to here. This one got here. I gave up all of my wood. I did that, I did that, and that was sitting there. And then down here, this moved over here. Then shuffled some things around here. This is on this one, this is on this one. That's all my stuff, and I'll just double check, make sure forest, forest, da 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 da. Like nothing happened on my board except, oh, I got rid of one of these, and I put the, what does that even say? Oh, I can't read that picture. It says the coal factory. Coal factory. Coal, oh, coal facility right here. And I think that's it. Okay. Okay. Oh, do I need the... Yeah, grab your guys and then just let me make sure that I got... My phase three guys or my phase four guys? Phase three. Yeah. Okay, I think I think we're good. They're always shuffling, shuffling. I don't know what that means. Dysentery and rickets. This is what happens when you miss chat comments and you jump in. You're like, what are they talking about? Um. I think they're talking about the characters. Oh, okay. Here we go. 
so what happened in round three briefly, for me anyway, was that this building came available, the coal facility, it cost brick. So I knew I needed to get brick somehow. And remember, the way that works is that if you move, if you're able to, if this was the situation and it wasn't, this is the end of round three, not the beginning. But if I wanted brick right now, I would just need to do something to take a food and then because the zero and the three are empty, that would move my bar and now bam, I have one brick. So I was in a state where I needed to do that. I needed to get to move one of those resources up in order to have the whole wheel turn in order to get brick in order to buy this coal facility. And this is what I find this designer does in his games a whole lot. It's like, I gotta do this. But in order to do that, I just gotta do this. Oh shoot, but in order to do that, I gotta do this, this, and this, right? So then it maps out this whole labyrinthine, you know, push pins and red string on a big cork board in order to figure out what you need to do for the next few turns. And you get down to a point where if the opponent, they can find this in Agricola by the same designer, you've got it all mapped out like that, and then if your opponent just takes that one spot that you need, it's like a domino effect and your whole strategy, like a house of cards, just comes falling down. I've used about five different analogies from games in that whole sentence, but I wanted to build this coal facility. I don't even know why, but I thought it was pretty cool. You get one point per coal at the end of the game, and look, you've got two opportunities to make coal. It gives you the points for the coal wherever coal I'm going to try it one more time because my tummy just gurgled. It gives you points for the coal on the wheel with the least coal. So of course what you want to do is get both coals up to seven on both wheels and then you'll get seven points for the building. That seemed pretty good to me, but I had to construct that spider web of cards. So I played this, uh, let's see, the forest manager because I was still trying to surround my mansion with groves. I played, I wanted to play the clay worker to get enough clay in order to build that building. I needed three clay for the coal facility, but then I noticed that he takes water and I had no water. So that means I had to play the pond builder in order to get the water to give to the clay worker to get the clay that I needed. I also needed space to put the thing, so I needed to clear out one of my forests using the slash and burn farmer guy, and I needed somebody who could build a building. So that's what the supplier was all about, and I thought I could pick up, if I was the exclusive player of the supplier, I could pick up whatever resources I needed and build that building. And I actually did manage to do it. It all came to fruition. I was able to clear off the forest with Slash and Burn Farmer and put the coal facility down on my board. So I had everything mapped out nicely for what was going to happen in round four. And then kind of how, how did it go for you, Cheryl, in round three? So I was still gunning for the estate and I managed to play it. I, um, so I, the first oh, Sorry, one... can you start again? I, was, I, I had foot, foot palsy and I stepped on the wrong things. All right. Okay. So I was still gunning for the estate, um, so I pulled the pond builder first, um, so I could build more ponds. Uh, the slash and burn farmer, because I needed to clear some more land. Uh, the cultivator, because I wanted to build um, more Are you ponds still collecting the sets? Yeah, yeah still yeah. trying to get the sets. And that was all I was able... Oh no, and then I was also able to play the clay worker, but just not my carpenter. Now, the reason why you weren't able to play your carpenter is we can already look at this set. And again, these were chosen in secret, but look, the pond builder and the pond builder, right? The slash and burn guy and the slash and burn farmer you chose. And then there's a third one in here, the clay worker and the clay worker, right? So that's how that went. So just to show how that uh, exclusivity thing goes, why don't we just like throw our cards out in the order that we played them and then we can just sort of show who, who blocked who and why options were limited in round three. So you were the first player, which means you got the glass chalice. Boom, there you go. So the very first card you played was the, well, we'll just put the cards down. I was the first player? <laughs> were you the first player? You were. Oh. Yeah, 3.1. Give me one second. What was the first one I played? Oh. Mm. Okay. okay, so reset on that one. Okay. So I played the carpenter first. Okay, and I played the pond guy first. And because I played the pond guy, that pulled the pond builder out, but he goes into one of your two slots on your board. So let's see him over there. So he gets relegated to a little card guy prison. So we each only got to pick one thing from that. And then you played who next? I played the slash and burn farmer. Okay, so that pulled the slash and bird farmer out of my hand, which means that over here on my board, he goes into one of those two slots. And then what did you, then it was my turn, right after the slash and bird farmer. Mm-hmm. 
So then I played the clay worker and you had the clay worker. So then over on your board, you had to put the clay worker in one of your slots. But look, both slots were already full, which meant that I didn't siphon the clay worker out of your hand. So I was able to do both of these things since that was the only clay worker on the table and you were then able to play your clay worker and do yeah. both of the things because you were the only person with the clay worker on that at that moment. That was really interesting. And then I played the supplier. And I got goods because this card allows uh, the opponent to take one of whatever you take. Right, so I took two goods and you took one thing and that's when I was actually able to finally build that coal facility that I had my eye on. Do we miss something? And then... We each have one card. And you played the last one, right? I guess so. 3.6. Okay, so back it up. 3.6 was your supplier. Oh yeah, what's 3.7? Uh, my clay worker. Oh, so we gotta back it up. Because after I played my clay worker, you didn't play your clay worker. Right away. You're right. Right, okay, so we'll back it up. Okay, here we go. So don't be don't be touching things because it won't cut well. Okay. <laughs> right, you, okay. you'll see them moving around. Okay, sorry. Okay, no so problem. And then I played my clay worker, and as we know, you had the clay worker in your hand, so you're about to play it. However, check out Cheryl's board. Look, both of those cards are already imprisoned, so she actually can't be forced to play that card out of her hand. Now, that means that since it's exclusive, I get to do both things on the card, and at any point now, for the rest of the round, Cheryl can play that card at her leisure and also do both things in the card. So you didn't actually decide to play your clay worker right away because of that. Now, but it's a risk though. You had it in your back pocket, you knew you needed to play it. But if you played a card and I also had that card, that would siphon the last card out of my hand and I would be out of cards which would end the round and you wouldn't be able to play that clay worker. So you took a bit of a risk, I think, delaying it. But which card did you play after right. that? Uh, I played the clay worker. No, you didn't. <laughs> what are you talking about? You did. We already established that you didn't play the clay worker after the clay worker. But I did. Are you, why are we resetting then? I don't know, I was confused. What's happening? Sorry, guys. What's happening? I'm sorry. So this is what I've written. Okay, okay, you do, uh, <laughs> what did you play first? I played the uh, carpenter. Okay, that was three, one, right? Three, three one. Three, two, I played the pawn guy. Yep. Three, 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 you played slash and burn. Yep. And I played Slash and Burn because it was a repeat. Three, Brian also had a Three, him. four, I played the Clay Worker. Three, five, you played the... Uh, Cultivator. That's what I'm saying. That's what we're missing. That's what oh I'm saying. Oh my God. It's okay. Okay. All right. So I think we... I think we let in with... You played the... <laughs> I'm sorry. So much. First time Chad from Viewer and Anonymous Cheer. And Anonymous Cheer, in case you're wondering what the heck is going on, we're just trying to struggle our way through this goofy concept where we've played the game already and we're re Don't be moving that! That has to stay where it was! I for continuity. You, I don't know. Continuity. you know when you I'm watch sorry. movies? That's okay. You know when you watch movies and like people are drinking and then the glasses like move around the table? You know? It's continuity. So we're trying to keep continuity. Anyway, we're trying to recreate a play that we did and then step through it. Briefly, I don't know how brief it's going to be, but I think I will lead in. I'll prompt you again, and you can play your cultivator. <laughs> okay, ready? But I played. Hold on. Yes. I played the cultivator before your supplier. Oh, did I skip? I might have skipped then. Three point one, me carpenter. Okay. okay. Let's this just start. Reset, Let's reset, just reset, reset. 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 Uh, stack in your hand the cards in the order that you played them. Got so, it. Okay, that might work. Pawn guy. Okay, so carpenter. Slash and burn farmer. Pawn builder. Slash and burn. Cultivator clay. Okay. Got it. Clay worker, supplier, and I didn't get to play forest manager. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, yes. cool. It's okay. We were bound to make that kind of error. Are you ready? Yeah. 
So you were the first player, Cheryl. What was the first card you played? I played the Carpenter. You played the Carpenter. I didn't have the Carpenter as we know, so you did your stuff. And then I played the Pawn Builder because I needed that water. Uh-oh. You had the Pawn Builder too. So that went into the slot at the side of the board and we each only got to do one thing on the Pawn Builder's card. Now, interestingly in this game, you actually wouldn't have to do the thing. You can play a card just because you think you're blocking someone. And then if you don't have the price to pay the person, you can just, you know, skip their thing. Uh, I think that this is such a tight game that that might not be a great strategy, just playing a card just to block. In a lot of these games that I play, playing just to block usually hurts you more than it hurts others. But that's what went on. So now you had the next card. And the next card I had was the Slash and Burn Farmer. Uh, I also had the Slash and Burn Farmer. So the Slash and Burn Farmer has to go into this little two slot holding cell over here. So we each got to do one thing, right? We removed a forest and then I played the Clay Worker and you had the Clay Worker in your hand. So it would go into one of those slots. However, check this out. Cheryl already has both slots blocked. So, where normally I would siphon that card out of her hand and she would be forced to play it, because she has both slots occupied, she doesn't have to play that card at all. Which means that since it's exclusive to the table, I get to do both things on the Clay Worker card, and if Cheryl wanted to play the Clay Worker card in a later turn, she would get to do both things on the card because it would still be exclusive. It wouldn't match any other card that had been played in that turn. So this is interesting. You could have played the Clay Worker right away, right after that, and you would have got to do both things. Uh, you decided not to. What did you play instead? The Cultivator. The Cultivator. So that's playing into your whole plan of getting different landscapes out so yes. that you could meet that matching criteria on, on one of your cards. And then it was my turn. I played the Supplier so that I could get some supplies, which also gives you supplies and build something. And then you played what? The Clay Worker. The Clay Worker. So you did manage to get it because I didn't run out of cards, right? So I, th I think that was pretty well played on your part. So I got to play one, two, three, four cards. You got to play all five cards in round four. And what did you accomplish over there on your board in round three? The penultimate one. Right. So in round three, I was able to clear some more forests and I got the colonization house, which allows me to clear more forests for coal, which I wanted to do in the next phase. It's important to me so that I could put more groves and ponds down and uh, cash in on the estate. Yeah, you want to make good on Once. that set, right? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And then over on my board, my big play was just building this coal facility and lighting myself up in round four to get all the coal. And so now, here we're going to take each turn individually in round four so you can see what the climax of this game looked like. Okay, but do 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 what's everybody in chat doing? Shuffling was a dance craze. I guess it still is. Yeah, what's shuffling look like? Do 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 do. Probably not that. This is the part where you wave your hands and fingers going doodly doodly do and the screen goes, oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And it doesn't work unless you do that. Like, you can't trigger that transition because it looks, it tracks those finger chips. Anyway. Are we in a completely white space? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, if you tune into the uh, Feast for Odin playthrough, you'll actually get to see when the camera completely, we had it plugged in the whole time, but it didn't think so. And so, like, three quarters of the way through the stream, as some of you will remember, it just decided to power down because, you know, when you, we use an iPhone for, for a couple of these cameras. And, you know, when you plug your iPhone in, and you know it's plugged in, but the iPhone's like, nah, I don't think I'll charge. That's what was happening the entire time. So the whole time we were shooting this five hour long thing, the battery was draining and it just cacked out. Cheryl, thank goodness, was following the stream from upstairs. So she ran down to the rescue. Dave and I were tethered. This is the one drawback of those microphones. That's why I like being, you know, oh, we're hands free and lavalier free. It's pretty great. So it is pretty great. So we couldn't leave the table because we were just mired in cords. So Cheryl actually it came down and adjusted it. There's probably a chapter heading if you want to see that anyway. The whole point is that this is a, a white scrim on a big black uh, frame, I guess. So it's like the kind of thing you'd buy if you wanted to do a green screen. It came with a green screen, it came with a white one, it came with a black one. I like using the white one. People were saying in the Discord server, by the way, oh, I can't show you the Discord server because we're not in graphics mode right now. But uh, some of the folks in the Discord server, maybe the, the mods can put up the address to the Discord server, were saying that they like that we're not 
surrounded by gigantic shelves of distracting board games on this channel that we just have like this weird like where are we it's like we're in that movie <laughs> cube i don't know who knows uh so i don't know maybe it's for people with sensory overload maybe it's nicer on their eyeballs it's certainly nicer the way you see around us oh yeah <laughs> definitely yeah if we were to take the camera and pan around the studio you'd be like oh oh my god put the white scrim back please i can't handle it too many cables there's so many things cape, oh, so many things okay let's get this last round set up and we can we can I sell this sucker photos too oh okay let me just put the photos up a little. Actually, if I shrink this, then I'll be able to keep an eye on chat and you Excuse at the same me, time. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so end of. Oh, that's end game. That's Ryan, end of three. Oh, end of three is what we're already set up for. We already did it. Oh, yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah, we're good. We're good. Okay, so we're good there. Okay, you just got to pull the guys that you used. Some yes, I've done it. Fuel. Oh, I have not. You're already way ahead of me. Fuel cars, charcoal, charcoal. Yes, sure, fishing cool, lint out of the phones is not fun. Oh, I agree. Is that why coffee. they don't connect, or is it just bad cables? It's, it seems Sometimes that... it is. They, they just need, the ports need a little bit of cleaning. A few clusters are over Uh-oh. Oh, no. There's one guy I didn't write down. No, I wrote down down here. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Um, I'm going to see if we had a... Yep, no, we're good. We're good. I got them all. Okay. All right, are you ready? I am ready. Okay. We didn't ask the people if they if they guess who won. Oh, that's a good one. I can't put the poll up, but if one of the mods is very savvy, they can launch a poll themselves with poll commands. But I am rather interested to know, at this point, who you think won this game. So Cheryl has her whole, her, her main thing is collecting those sets of landscapes. So for each pit, grove, and pond she collects, she gets two points. Meanwhile, over in Ryan land, my big thing is that mansion right in the center of the board, which uh, gives me two points for each surrounding like adjacent grove. And I've got three out of four of those slots filled. This guy shouldn't be here. Let's get him out of here. And then I also have this thing down here that gets me a point uh, per every charcoal on the wheel with the least charcoal on it. So if I was able to get my charcoal up on both wheels to seven, I would get seven points for that. Seven points and eight points. Remember, we're talking about little scores in this game. And what else? You had one other thing going on in your board, Cheryl, right? One other strategy thing that you were doing? Um, Maybe I not. I don't really have any other, like, I don't think I built any more pits at this point because um, I got three points for that, but... Yeah, so vote one yeah. is going to be Ryan wins. Vote two is going to be Cheryl wins. So vote one for Ryan, vote two for Cheryl. Oberon, already a defector, already stabbing me in the back, <laughs> deciding that it's going to be Cheryl. Remember, if you watch the Knights Around the Table stream very often, the smart money is on not Ryan. So I'm not going to fault you for voting for Cheryl. That's fine. Uh, yeah, one for Ryan, two for Cheryl. Let's see how it goes. And then we'll let that go for a little bit. Unfortunately, we can't visualize it, but, uh, but the mods can close it when they think it's time to close it. Uh, again... I'm surprised at how tight the scores were, how, how few points that we're talking about here. But yeah, while you've got that going on, uh, let's let's do the, this last round and then we'll shoot the final segment and we'll be out of here. Okay. And then later you'll get to watch the whole thing and you'll get to hear your own audience laughter and all the times you clapped. Won't that be Aww, exciting? That's such a What's, nice that? What's the comment? <laughs> My vote is always Cheryl because she's delightful. Delete. Thank you so much. Delete. <laughs> Mods. What's happening? All right. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, I had the start player challenge, right? You okay. did. Let me just read what I said. My strategy was here. All the. Oh yeah. So after I. <laughs> Thank you, puppy. <laughs> Forest manager managing fuel collector. Okay. Mods cannot delete the truth. <laughs> <laughs> We're working on it. I'm working on a command. Exclamation mark delete truth. We keep truth. being nice to Cheryl. She'll I, keep coming back. <laughs> Cheryl's already committed. She's told me. What did you tell me about coming back? That I would come back every Tuesday. Yeah. So we'll see. 
can you handle that much Cheryl? I know I can't. No, <laughs> just kidding, of course I can. I've handled 19 years of Cheryl. I'm yeah. looking forward to more. Okay. okay. I just joke, I kid. Right. I kid, I pretend to be a jerk. <laughs> pretend, Ooh, pretend. Yeah, pretend. No. Let's do this so we can go get some grub. Okay. Oh yeah, food. Yeah, food. Yeah, that's a thing. Are you ready? Is everybody ready? Um. I'll, I'll again, I'll, I'll lead. Yes, All of right. course. Uh, you were first player, weren't you? Mm hmm Yeah. Okay. So here we are, round four of Glass Road. And if I knew one thing, it's that it was mission critical for me to get my charcoal levels up to the max in each wheel so that I could get seven big points. And I knew that I needed to build one more grove here so that I could get eight points for my mansion. And that would be, I mean, that's pretty good. And these are kind of like bonuses, right? If you can get brick, you get a point per brick. If you can get your wheels situated so you get glass, you know, you can get one point per glass. And look already here, I'm in a position where as soon as I take food, that wheel's going to move and give me bricks, so I'm feeling pretty good. So these are the cards that I chose going into the final round. First and foremost, the Fuel Collector, because that gives you one charcoal per every card in your hand, and I need as much charcoal as I can get. Uh, the Charcoal Burner as well, since I'm going all in on a charcoal strategy, makes sense. Forest Manager was going to be the guy who could get me that fourth grove to surround my mansion. And then I thought uh, Clay Worker, just to get some resources and the supplier so that I could you know, build something. And the thing that I had my eye on over here was this coal storage building. Look, it costs clay and it gets you one point per three charcoal. So I thought, wow, that's a good synergy. That building plays into my whole charcoal strategy, but I'm gonna need clay to do it, which is why I put the clay worker in my hand. Cheryl, which five cards did you grab at the end, at the at the final, in the final days yes. of Glass so Road? I grabbed the forest manager. Yes. Because I wanna build more groves mm -hmm, for my strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, the cultivator, again, mm -hmm. plays into my strategy. Fish farmer, um, I can't remember, Why? I think it was low on food. Did somebody cost a food? Is that one? I remember one? why. Well, flip out the other you side. Know, oh, I think this was the one. There was one I was like, I pulled it and I shouldn't have. And I, That was the mistake? It was the mistake. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was not happy well, with Well, it was our first play, right? So who knows? Yeah. What else did you get? Um, I pulled the, uh, the woodcutter to get more wood and get rid of my forest so I can make more land. Uh, and then the fuel collector. Um, again, more wood, and I wanted some more coal. Can't, my coal was low. Yeah, I'm not so quite sure. So we can already suspect. To feed him, I think I needed feed anyway. the fish farmer. Yeah, you did need coal to, to somehow he eats coal. I don't know what the deal is. Yeah, it's a bit strange. But then I just want to say, mm -hmm. so I was very excited because I think you hadn't clued into a particular building here, okay, which, which one? was this dis district office. Um, no, I don't think we've explained these very well in the third round. I was upset because I figured out kind of how this game worked, and I think you figured it out earlier than I did. The way that these buildings work, there are two things that you can do at any point in the game, even when it's not your turn. Those two things are pluck off one of these landscapes, like we talked about. The forest has to stay there. You need a card. But you can get rid of a pond, for example, at any time. The other thing you can do at any point is you can fire off these purple buildings to do these exchanges as much as you want. So this isn't one time, one food for two glass, uh, two sand. This is like, at any point in the game, spend as much, sorry, water, not food, spend as much water as you want for uh, two glass, like a million times. You have like seven water, boom, 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 you do that seven times and you get a whole pile of, well, you would get 14 glass, which you can't hold in your wheel because your wheels, as you can see, only go up to seven in each resource. But the point is you can do that as much as you want. So the, the building you wanted was the district office because I was still working towards my strategy with the estate to get points for the collection. And this allows me to remove two buildings from my private supply, which I got from the feudal lord the first round. That's right. Um, so I built the estate, which was one of them, one of the three, and then I had two left over, and I was like, great, I'm going to ditch those, mm -hmm. and I can place another forester. So you're able to play, like, on. essentially three cards that did landscape stuff for you, when really there's only yes. two in those 15 that yes. do it. Smart. So I was so, super excited about that. Let's see how it actually works because something interesting happened midway through round four. So the very first card that I played was the Fuel Collector because the earlier you play him, the more charcoal you get. It's one charcoal per card in your hand. Did you have the Fuel Collector, Cheryl? Uh, I 
did, but that's not what I have as being played first. Well, tough, because the game says that I forced you to pull it out of your hands. So you have to put it in that slot next to your board. Interesting. Do right? it. This is how I remember it. You had to play your fuel collector, no. which is a bummer for me. I mean, I didn't want you to. It was this one. It was the forest manager. Uh oh. Did, you, did we keep bad notes? Oh my gosh! I put them in the wrong order. Just back it up, back it up, back it up. <laughs> you're, like, you're stunned, look. Am I going? Hold on, let me put them in the right order. Ah. Forest manager, okay. Forest manager's first. Charcoal farmer was second. No wonder you uh, confused you. Of course, that would mess the whole thing up. Yeah, like, I was okay, like, great. is this gaming gaslighting happening? Oh, What's thought, happening here? I thought I had them in the right order. <laughs> All it's right, okay. we're good. We're it's good. okay. It's okay. We're gonna get better at this. We are. Yeah. This is challenging, but we can do it. Yeah. All right. It's all good. Are okay. you ready? Yep. Okay. Reset. <laughs> Game face on. Here we go. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> Come back to this. So the first card that I played out of my hand was the Forest Manager because I wanted to get that fourth forest next to my mansion and score max points. Did you have the Forest Manager? Yes, and you, you knew were. I wanted that. <laughs> yes, I knew that Cheryl was going to play as many landscape cards as she could. So that card has to go in the, your, little, your little slot next to your board into Specialist Prison. So we each Perfect got to door. do one thing. So of course the thing that you did was the top one, right? You cleared off something, or no, you just put down a grove on your board. I did. So where did yep. you put down the grove? I believe I put it Yeah, yes. Meanwhile, it was more important to me to have, I got to do one of these two things, and I just really, uh, I needed the wood desperately. No, I'm going to reset that because that's a total lie. I just didn't keep a good enough note. Hold on. So, of course, what I did with the forest manager was... At my option, I could get rid of that pond, and I put down the fourth grove that I needed to make good on that mansion, and I took a wood. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, what was your first card for your turn? My first card was the Cultivator. The Cultivator, and I did not have the Cultivator in my hand, so what did the Cultivator allow you to do? That's another landscape one, right? <laughs> yes. So, the cultivator. Oh, so what I ended up doing was, because you can use purple buildings at any time, I blitzed this forest, I believe. Yes, it was. Um, because I needed to make room because I also wanted to put down a building. Because before that, I only, only had the one space free. So, um, in blitzing that forest, it gave me a coal. Which wheel did you choose to take your coal on? And I didn't take the greatest notes, so I can't remember which Well, it was one, one of them. <laughs> so, I don't know. Let's say Let's that say one. Let's say that one. Now, okay. we should say that one of the rules is if one of these guys gets you two of something, you're not allowed to split that up between your two wheels. But if somebody like the clay worker or this charcoal burner gets you three of something, you're able to pick which wheel the three goes on. So right. you couldn't go two charcoal on one wheel and one on another, but you could go three on one, and if you get to do both actions, three on another, or the same. It yep. depends. So what was next? You're going to blitz more forests, I suppose. So, uh, so yeah, I remove. So I used the colonization house to remove the forest, and then I bought a building because I had placed this. Was it this Wait group? a second, back up. Do you want to take yeah. a drink? Yeah, I need to take a drink. I throat was so dry. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Hold on. Mm. And I can hear my stomach going. <laughs> that was a problem that it took me a really long time to figure out when I was doing my How to Play videos, is I would, I would get to doing the Ryan shots, and my stomach would just be going like, blah, 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 the whole time I was trying to say my lines. I'm like, what is this? And I, 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 it would do it after I ate. It would do it if I didn't eat. It would do it just like no matter what. It was just whenever I was sitting in the chair, my stomach would go, and it was very audible because the mic was sitting right here. And I finally figured out the secret. It's because the way my 
camera was framing me is there wasn't a whole lot of headroom. I wanted to see a little bit of the table and I wanted to be in the shot and just the focal length of the camera was such that I had to pull the lever on my chair and shrink myself down which put kind of like my knees up above my guts and I think just think being in that weird position just like lowered slightly made my stomach churn all the time. So it had nothing to do with eating food or not eating food. It had to do with my 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 guts being like compressed and my you know and my butt being lower than my large intestine or whatever and then just like it just activated my digestion somehow my stomach would go nuts anyway gross tmi from ryan about tummy gurgles i'm gonna mark that as a cut out of final video okay. moment this is why you're here live by the way you know these fascinating stories the behind the scenes stuff are you ready yes okay go Okay, so after I used my colonization house, I used, I used the cultivator action to build a pond, and I also bought a building. So I put the pond here, I believe, and then I took the district office right here. The one you had your eyes on. Yeah, and the district office cost me one wood and one glass, so I went down in those. Um, and I think that's it. Oh, and then I used, and then, oh, th right, this was an epic turn. So, this I allows this me one. to remove two buildings from my private offer, which I did, which these two right here, in order to place uh, another, I placed a grove, I believe, yes. Right there, and then suddenly I had... How many sets is that? Four sets. Four sets, so that's two points per set. So at that point, Cheryl had basically, in a two player game, you know how it goes, you get a point, if they get a point, well, it, you might as well not have gotten that point, right? So it kind of like negates any points you got. Now Cheryl had four sets, and over here in Mansionland, I was so proud of myself sur for surrounding my mansion, because I get two, four, six, eight. Well, she's got eight points with her set collecting thing, so now those scores even each other out, so I have to find another way to edge her out. <laughs> Checking notes. Charcoal, charcoal burner. So what I decided to do was to make good on that building where, again, the the wheel with the fewest number of charcoals gets me a, a point per charcoal. So the ideal there, the optimal there, is to jack up both wheels to seven charcoal somehow. So I played the charcoal burner, which I had to feed a wood, and then I would get three charcoal, three charcoal, so I could pump it up on both wheels. Did you have the charcoal burner in your hand? I did not. Good, so I got to do it twice, thank goodness. So both of these. So I took that wood that I gained from the forest manager off my glassworks, and then I was able to go blomp, 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 pump that up three, blomp, blomp, blomp. So now the wheel with the fewest number of charcoal on it was this brickworks down here, six versus seven. So already I'm good for six points. So I was feeling pretty happy about that. Cheryl, what was your next card? So my next card was the fish farmer. So I paid a coal, which was from glass, and I got six food, which I used up here, and then that pushed the needle up, which meant I had a brick. And a brick is worth a point at the end of the game. That's right. Or you could use it to build buildings, though that seems a little bit risky at this point, depending on the building you're going for, right? Correct. Now. Hold on, let me just read my notes on this because this is important. Now, it was imperative to me that I was able to jack up this last charcoal here because then instead of getting six points, I would get seven points. But I also, in order to make good on this, I wanted to desperately to buy this coal storage, which gets me a point per three charcoal, no matter which wheel it's on. So, just waiting for my tummy to stop. Ugh. Oh my goodness, do you hear that? That's bad. I, yep. Do you guys hear that in chat? Everybody hears that. <laughs> Everybody hears that. The neighbors hear that. 
So I had two cards that were extremely important to me, and it was extremely important that I would get to do both actions on both cards, which meant that if Cheryl had either of these cards in her hand when I played one or the other of them, and I didn't get to do both things on both cards, my entire strategy would be torpedoed. I wouldn't get all the charcoal that I needed from the fuel collector, and I wouldn't get the clay that I needed to be, be able to buy this coal storage and be able to make good on all this coal that I was picking up. So I didn't know which one to play. And the fuel collector is better when you play it earlier. I only needed one charcoal, but the earlier you play it, you get one charcoal per card in your hand. So better earlier, but I think more crucial to me now in order to get the clay worker just to build that building, to make good on some of the charcoal that I collected. So for this turn, this do or die turn, I chose the clay worker. Cheryl, did you have the clay worker in your hand? I did not. You did not? You just got to do both things. Ah, I picked right. But interestingly. Yes. I did have the fuel collector. <laughs> we'll get there. And we knew that from the top of the round. But here we go. So. Well, that's weird. I only wrote down that I took. Oh, yeah, right. It's three clay and three clay. I only wrote down that I took. Oh, yeah. Why did I only put three clay up? Because I get four clay. Oh, well. I put three clay. Why did I just put three clay? Oh, well. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. All the way to the top on clay. So now I can afford that building. All right, facing the camera. Yes, sorry. All right, over to you, Cheryl. What was your next card? My next card was the Fuel Collector. Haha, <laughs> and as we know, I have the Fuel Collector, so that drew the card out of my hand. I had to put it in Card Prison, which means that both of us only got to do one thing. That's okay, I only need that one charcoal in order to go bloop like this, and now I've got seven on both, no problem. So I knew I, knew I was safe. Cheryl, you wanted to do both of those things, of course. You, um, which one did you pick though? I, what I ended up doing was dumping my water down for to pay for the fuel collector. Right, of course. I did the same thing. Yes. And then I took the So left left in my hand was one card. Yeah, but we're talking about what you did with your fuel collector. Right. So oh, I right, took you got coal. one card, right, yeah. One card. You got one card in your hand, so you get to take one coal for your which fuel collector. Bumps up my you got another brick. I talked yes. over you. Can we just redo that a little bit? Yep. Let's get this straight too. Bloop, 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 bloop. So let's do it without me yammering over top of you. Right. So what I ended up doing was taking uh, the, the coal per card in my hand. And I only have one card left. So I added the coal, which moves the needle and gives me two brick. Keeping in mind that brick are worth a point each at the end of the game yes. per the building that's pre-printed on your board. So yep. now, how many cards do you have left? One. And I've got one, so that means if I play this, that ends the round and the game, right? The fourth round. And if Cheryl's card is the same as my card, then at least she gets to do one thing and I'm limited to one thing on this card. So the card that I played for the final turn, possibly, in this game... No, definitely the final turn. Definitely. But maybe, like... The last thing that I get to do, maybe the last thing you get to do, was the supplier, and your last card was which one? It was the woodcutter. Right, so you didn't get but to I play that card, it right? Was, I didn't need to... It was fine, anyway. So I just got to play the supplier, fine. So I get to do both things on the supplier. So here's what happened over in Ryanland. I took two food... <laughs> See if you can see this coming, which moved my bar like this, doo -doo -doo -doo, and then I got to buy the coal storage because the supplier... Oh, and taking that two food, by the way, gives Cheryl a food. So she gets to take that food. Let's see that, Cheryl. You did it already. There it is. Oh, no, I didn't. Okay, I... take your food. You took food, right? Yeah, so... I noticed Oh, one... just one, though. I get two, you get one. Oh, right, yes. yes. I did notice an error in one of my turns. That's okay, we can talk about it at the end. Okay. Well, is it... It affects is it, the score, and so... It affects the score? No, 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 like, I did it in the real game. I did it the first time. Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, we'll, t we'll talk about it when we get to scoring. How about that? I just missed a step in my notes. Okay. Totally fine. Yeah, okay. 
So over here, uh, because of his purchase capability, I was able to buy that precious coal storage building. And in Rhineland, it goes right next to my other coal facility building. And now we were ready to score. The way that you score the game is like super simple. You just look and count up all the face values on the buildings and then you rip. I got a reset because I was pointing at the wrong board. So the way that you score is really, really simple. All that you do is you rip through all your buildings and you count up the points for the face values, and then you go back through all the ones that have these little asterisks on them, and you count up the meta points on your board. So Cheryl, give me the number, well, he, wait, wait, I'll cut there and we'll wait for the toilet to finish flushing. da da doo ba doo boo doo ba doo Anyway. Yeah, can you guys hear that toilet? That's a good question. Can you hear a toilet? The thing I forgot to do was an anytime turn. Yeah. So am I allowed to do it before we score? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So you just got rid of another, that forest at the bottom left? Yep. Yeah. With my colonization house, which moved my coal, which moved that. Okay. That's how it was at the end of the oh, game. Okay, yeah. perfect. Yep. Actually, undo that and we'll get that on, on yep. camera just in case we need it. Okay. Okay, what did you forget to do? So, I used my colonization house uh, during my fish farm return to uh, clear some forest. So I'd had this forest here. Actually, sorry, we rolled reset again so they yeah, actually okay. had it on there. Okay. So what did you say you forgot to do? So during my fish farm return, I used my colonization house here to clear this forest, mm -hmm. um, which gives me an extra coal, which when I move that up, turns uh, clears the wheel out those two. and yep. gives me three brick. So you got three brick total for three points, one point per brick. Yes. Okay, we're looking okay. So here's how the score is played out. And then I'm going to have a little graphic going on there. Okay. Uh, for face value on buildings, Ryan had one point and Cheryl had five big points from her board. Go get my shot. But that's not where the big points were. The big points were in the meta-scoring buildings. And in the meta-scoring buildings, for all those sets of landscape tiles, plus what else did you have that scored meta? That was it, just the meta landscape ones. Um, yeah, just the landscape ones, you're right. You scored 17 points. Which is an odd number, so mathematically that doesn't work out. But you scored extra points for the brick that you were holding on to, right? You had one glass and... I had three points from the sand, because it's half a point. Right. And, and then you had three points from the brick. Yep, and mm -hmm. eight from that, and then three from the sediment factory. So that all equaled 17 points for Cheryl. Then over in Ryanland... I got full eight points for the mansion. I got three points per coal. I'll stop pointing at things so it's easier to edit around it. So of course I had seven coal and seven coal. So it's 14 divided by three is four, you know, rounding down. And then for the coal facility, I got one point per coal on my lowest coal wheel. And so since they were both at seven, I got seven points for that, which equals 22 points per person. Wait, why are you shouting at your computer screen? Did I do something wrong? Oh my God. What I didn't realize, I thought it was a complete tie game and we both did so well. But what I didn't notice was when I took the two food that moved the bar up, and in moving the bar up, that diminished the amount of coal I had, and so I got points for the coal on the smallest wheel, so I did not, in fact, score 22 points. I scored 20 points because I lost those two points of the tile! It wasn't a tie. Cheryl bested me 20 points to 18. Is that how it worked out? No, 22 to 20. So let me say that one more time. So I did not, in fact, win. Cheryl bested me 22 points to 20. So close, if not for the stupid brick. Right. Because I went down two points in this coal learning, but up two points in the brick, so it all canceled each other out. And now the 
final word. If you were to play Glass Road again, Cher Cher, what do you think that you would do differently? Mistakes were made, we learned certain things, so how would you replay it if you were to replay it? If I was to replay it... I'm going to do that one more time, sorry, but let's... Can we both... Someone's uh, saying there's issues with my thing. Oh, issues on your board. Yeah, we should... <laughs> okay, so what's going on? Did we not get it right? Did we not follow the... There's a max somewhere, but I don't see a max. There's a max on your tile uh, per this one up here is maybe what they're talking about. That's your only, or is it a max on sand? What's the max on top right? Is there a max on that? I don't think so. It doesn't say anything. There's no max. It just says two per set. Two per set. With an asterisk. But he's thinking that he saw a tile that said max. Like the only thing that I see. Oh, any... sorry, I saw something wasn't there. So I just didn't oh, want to. Okay. If the scoring was completely wrong, I didn't want to keep recording right, exactly. that. Exactly. We don't want like... to lay it down and then be like, oh. and then the angry complaints come yeah, flooding right? in. Uh, like, I watched this video for free, and I would like you to know the following nineteen problems with it. <laughs> That's how I picture their voices sound whenever I get these. Very good comments on YouTube. That was very nice to me on YouTube, except every once in a while, somebody's like, yeah. somebody said to me. Uh, let me mark a little like edit point. Somebody said to me on one of the videos a couple of weeks back, um, you made a mistake at this time code. By the way, if you find mistakes and you, you're able to point out which time code is at, that's perfect because that helps me add addendum. Unfortunately, the way YouTube works is you can't you can't edit after the fact. Like once it's up, your only options are to leave it up and like, you know, Rado does his thing where he puts it in the Klingon channel. I put links to it on the website. So for every game I do, there's a potential addenda section where I list the mistakes and I link back to the video and the time codes where I made a mistake. Uh, because your only other option is to like scrap the entire video, re-edit those bits and re-upload it and then lose all the views that you have. So it's like nobody ever watched the video. So all the people who already watch it aren't gonna watch it a second time. So it's just, it's, ba it's a bad, it's a bad situation. I was just on a survey with YouTube today and they were like, how do you like YouTube? I'm like, it's bad because of this. I was just mentioning it to them. Why was I saying all of that? I gave you these stories and I forget what I was even talking about. Uh, oh yeah, people, yeah. so I had somebody point out on, uh, on a YouTube comment, he was like a, he, I assume, he said, uh, you made a mistake at this time code. We expect these videos to be flawless, and if you're going to go around teaching board games and the videos aren't perfect, we can't use them, or something like that. And I was like, guy, for real, like, <laughs> get a grip. You'll be okay, I'm sure. Wow. Um, I feel like we're migrating closer to your table. Can we frame ourselves a little bit better in the... There you go. Oh, okay. no. Oh, it's the other way. we got to get closer to your table. So I'm over here, and there. We're framed a bit better now. Yeah, okay. great. Okay, cool. Actually, yeah, exactly. Actually. Oh no, in doing that, I exposed something on this arm. Is this table? Is this table? No. Yeah. That table? Oh well. I'll keep my arm. Yeah, I'll go back. I'll go back so we can't see that corner of the table. Yeah, it's fine. We're generally centered. Whatever. It's alright. It's good. Okay, so the thrilling conclusion. Well, that's how everything shook out, and now the final word. <laughs> well, that's how everyone shook. Take three. Well, that's how everything shook out, and now the final word. Cheryl, if you were to play Glass Road over again, what do you think you'd do differently? Uh, I think initially I was pretty scared to play around with this wheel over here. It's it's daunting. It was yeah. It it, it took a little bit for my brain to really get it. Um, but I think don't be scared and just, you know, drop some stuff so that you can get your glass and get your brick earlier and then that would enable you to buy a lot more of these buildings over here. Like mm -hmm. a lot of them require brick or glass and they're great, so... And I think that's one thing that I didn't ca caught on to very early is that Obviously, duh, the building materials are brick, clay, wood, glass. And I thought, oh, I'm going to build my empire out of charcoal and we'll create entire buildings out of soot and dust and ash. And I will be the lord of the, the soot fields. It doesn't happen that way. So I think I focused on the wrong on the wrong materials. I did too, though. I, I focused on sand, so... Yeah, that's right. You thought sand was going to be super important. And then I was like, no. It would for certain strategies, because that was another thing you said, wasn't it, that... that one key thing is to is to identify synergies among the buildings that get dealt out to the main board. 
right? Yes. But that's risky, right? Because that is a public board, so anybody can build those buildings. So if you, yeah, if you develop like a perfect pathway through like, oh, I'll get this, I'll get this, I'll build that, I'll build that. And then just like I said with other Rosenberg games, if somebody throws a wrench in your gear by buying the one thing that your whole house was built on, the whole thing, that's the linchpin, it all comes tumbling down and you're toast. Yeah. You're completely toast. One thing that I wanted to know before I started the game was how tight it was. It's immensely tight and how small the scores were. I felt really bad when I was like hinging my entire strategy around building this one building with four grows around it. I thought, well, yeah, and then what? Like, what are you going to do for an encore? But really, when we just came down with a 22 to 20 score, eight points is significant, right? Yeah, it's really something. The other mistake I think I made was, and he even says it in the rule book, these purple buildings where you can do these exchanges at any time all you want, you just kind of like get a sense as you're playing of how tight your turn's on and how few things you get to do. And if other players have the cards that you're trying to play, it diminishes even those things that you expected to be able to do. But if you've got those purple buildings, man, at any point, it doesn't even have to be your turn. You can just start, you know, cranking out these exchanges. So I think I, I think if I play again, I want to focus more on getting those purple buildings. I think they're crucial. Yeah, they're very powerful. This middle row I don't like. I don't like this one off. I used it once, but I don't like you spend a whole bunch of money in order to just one time get a thing and then it takes up room on your board. So unless there was another meta scoring building that's like you get points for having this building adjacent to other buildings or something. I, 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 I didn't have a lot of use for this row. I didn't buy any from that row, I don't think. I just did one. I just did one of this artist's colony that just got me one glass once. But of course, you know, it's kind of expensive depending on where you are on the wheels to get your glass factory to build glass. Sorry, I bought one to get me bricks. Which one? Show us. The storage. Oh yeah. The top here. Yeah, that's right. Which you put to good use, I would say. Yeah. And you did win. Yeah. Maybe a more important question. Would you play Glass Road again? My initial thoughts were it wouldn't be something that would come off the shelf right away, but... Hmm. What would come up on the shelf before this? Like, what would you grab before Glass Road? Usually something heavier, honestly, like uh, Feast for Odin. Right, and we have been playing games like that where we'll put them on... We have a table set up in our living room now, and we'll put it up and do, like, two rounds and then go to bed. And then three days later, we'll play another round and then go to bed. So something like Feast for Odin, which is by the same designer, we have to stretch over multiple weeks sometimes to get a game through. Sometimes. And then who messes that plan up? The cats. The cats. Pippin. Pippin the cat likes yes. to jump on board game tables and finds board game pieces extremely fun when they clink and land on the ground. So He picks them up and then carries them around for a little bit. So some of the techniques that we, we've decided on for deterring the cats include um, we've covered things with like Tupperware container lids and things. Yes, so we've done that. The box lids. The box lids. And then if he bats the box lids around, it pushes all our stuff around. We've had to take pictures in between rounds. And then your whole foil trick. Yes. So cats don't I'm like sure. landing on tin foil, right? <laughs> so Cheryl's like, oh, all we gotta do, all we gotta do is like stretch. Cover the entire table. Just multiple sheets of tin foil. Of course, the tin foil's moving the pieces around. The cats don't go on it, but it's the most unwieldy solution. If anybody has a good solution, other than being mean to the cats, of how to get the cats <laughs> off your board game table, we're all ears, let us know down in the comments. Would I play it again? I, you know what? I'm really eager to see what the rest of these buildings look like. As I mentioned, there's this huge stack that you can dig through for each each pile of buildings, and it's more the way that the buildings come out on the board. And I think that I would use that Feudal Lord card, card more than once just to get a really nice selection of stuff. You say that, and then you go play it. It's really tight. You can't yeah, do it. It's four rounds. It is only four rounds. So, I don't know. I thought about using it again, and I was like, ah, I didn't really like... I only liked one of the three, so mm -hmm. it's a waste of a turn, really. You say that even though you did have the building that you could use multiple times in order to get rid of private buildings to do what? I, to build more landscape tops. But I got that last round. And you only have so many spaces on your board. Man, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a tricky one. I think what we both agreed on was that it plays so quickly, it's only four rounds, especially at the two-player count. It goes so zippy that it's a great weeknight game. But that's right, if we were both wanting something really substantial and meaty to play, we'd reach for something probably more substantial and meaty, like A Feast for Odin by the same designer. So, Cheryl, Glass Road in a, in a single word? Challenging. Your word? Opaque. Thanks very much for watching this episode of Play Javu, and we'll catch you in the next one.
I should do a better tagline on that. <laughs> well, that was Pleja Vu, Glass Road. Thanks very much for watching. It is one more time. Well, that was Pleja Vu for Glass Road. Thanks very much for watching this episode, and we'll catch you in the next one. This is where we awkwardly stare at the camera as it slowly fades out. And you try not to move your eyeballs or your lips. It's a very good practice for becoming a hand-handlecast. Are you a very good hand-handlecast, Cheryl? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, we're good. We're clear. <laughs> we're clear. So we can, uh, we can go back to like audience uh, participation mode. Hold on, we'll switch. Oh, I can't see anything. Hair. Oof. That was hairy, man. That was way hairier than I thought it would be. But you oh, said we were only going to do the first and fourth round. I know, but we I and thought we would just talk your mind. briefly about what happened. But we didn't do each turn in rounds two and four. It's true. And again, if it's boring, we just cut it out. Yeah, okay. Right? But unfortunately, you but folks in chat... These guys might find it boring. I know. All right. Tell me truthfully. You don't have to tell me now. Was that mega boring to watch, to be behind the scenes, to see what happens when we mess up? <laughs> as we do frequently. Oh my gosh. That was uh, that was hard. It was surprising. That was hard. tough, man. And we even said, Cheryl's like, oh, you know, we could do this with Tricarian. So I was like, yeah, right away. Yeah, but I thought like round one in the, like, the last round, maybe potentially. I thought round, if we did something like Tricarian, round one, round three, round seven would be okay. One and seven. One and seven, but like <laughs> you're gonna miss the whole mid game. I, I think mean, you gotta I guess do so. initial to help people understand. What do you guys think? Yeah, what do you guys think? If we were to do Tricarian, would you do one, three, seven? Would you do one and seven, like Cheryl says? And don't say that just because you like Cheryl more than me. I've got your <laughs> number. Do answer with your heart and with what you think would make a better video. Uh, you don't see the game one in seven, Sadamo. Yeah, I agree. Like, you, you yeah, need to fair. see the mid game, okay. yeah, you need to fair. see how things developed. I think. But I don't think that we would do round summaries for two, three, four. That would be boring. No. Yeah, keep it pithier, especially with a big Skip. big old game like that. Hmm. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us. I really appreciate you. you having there. It felt like it felt like equal parts supportive and nerve wracking because you were there watching us mess up. But I guess that's part of the fun. I, I don't know, depending yeah. on what you find fun. We're gonna go grab some dinner. Remember all month long, it's Stocky I Rosenberg month on Nights Around the Table. I'm going to dig up the proper pronunciation of that guy's first name. I'm going to nail it next time. Uh, so join us on Saturday night. Cheryl's going to be back with me. We're going to be playing Le Havre, which is about longshoremen. And I believe we come up with a fun, uh, I don't want to call it a gimmick, but a fun enrichment activity, just like the zoo animals. Anytime that you follow or cheer or sub on this channel, we do something interesting during our live streams. We didn't this time because we were doing this taping, but uh, on Saturday night we've got something fun and thematic cooked up for you if you want to cheer, follow, or sub on Saturday night. And then following that, Cheryl and I are going to do something Tuesday. It's probably going to be Patchwork Christmas on Tuesday fun. with Santa hats. And then after that, Sean's going to join us for Halatow. Uwe Rosenberg Month continues. Unless anything has anything else to say, all it says do three, five, seven, and just summarize the start. It's interesting with that game though, because all of the thinking, all I think it, it, your turns get faster and faster as you go in, I don't know what this is supposed to represent. <laughs> you see there's a triangle, a there's a funnel. Yeah, I guess, the, the thinking time. So this yeah. is like lots of thinking time and as you go is less and less thinking time because your, your strategy foments and it gets zippier as you go in that game. Um, so I, I think round one is important in Tricarian at least, but I don't know, it depends on the game, right? Cool. What's going on? L larve. Larve? Is that how you pronounce it? Larve by Uwa. All right, cool. The last thing we'll do is, since we've got the mods here, mods, I've got a brand new command. You guys are going to have to fight amongst yourselves which one of you gets to use it. But pick somebody for us to raid, and then you'll be able to see my fancy new raid graphics, which I'm entirely excited to unveil. So go see somebody that we can uh, we can jump into and harass next. No like... harassment. Tailwagon Games. It's going to be Tailwagon Games. Cool. And they're queued up and ready to go. So let me just go to my raid page. Uh, and we'll hit raid. Commence raid. Does it work? Come on now. Come on, I'm gonna push the button one more time. Raid. Oh no, is it not doing it? Raid. Damn it. Damn it. 
I see it, it's queued up. I'm pushing the raid button and it's not happening. Why isn't it happening? All right. Because it's that kind of day. It is that kind of day, man. You guys gotta believe me. I tested this. I tested this out the wazoo. I spent most of the week testing this one feature. Hold on, let me just double check here why this is not working. Yeah, okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. To the raid page. To the raid page. The raid page is right here. Uh, nope, that's not it. Sorry, guys. We will get we will get this, and then together, you know, well, it'll be glorious. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see why it might not work. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna do manual override. Sorry, that command will work next time, guys. Uh, but let me uh, let me manually override it right now. So raid tail wagon games. Oh, I just punched myself in the eyeball with my knuckle. That didn't feel so good. That's great. Oh, that did not work. Raid. You typed it. Tail wagon games. All right. There you go. Fantastic. Oh, we're spooling up. Remember, you get channel points for raiding, and we'll come up with some fun stuff for channel points to do, I promise. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you uh, shortly. You. Did you just watch that whole thing? Oh, hey, to 100% this video, click the badge to subscribe and then click the bell to get notifications when I've got new stuff.